met a gypsy. Uh, Tom Janae is in the building. We're uh, we're locking in for a, a proper Gypsy Tales podcast, which I'm pretty excited about, <laughs> mate. Yeah, dude. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me. This is uh, it's crazy. I know, like, we probably wanted to do this with like the whole crew, but um, yeah, I mean, at some point we'll definitely do it. Everyone's pretty pretty busy right now, and I figured why not why not hop on here and like just just talk about whatever. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty sick timing actually. Um, but yeah, you can sort of feel like everyone's fully in the mode at the moment. You know, it's like everyone's yeah. either slow trying to get into like the holiday mode. Or you got like the boys are just in like full grind mode. It's so hectic how it works for those guys to be, you know, like everyone's slowing down for Christmas or wants to slow down for Christmas, but those boys just can't take their foot off the gas at all. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, yeah, I, and especially right now we're like about to end November, and I think, I mean, obviously I'm just like filming and I just watch everything but um i feel like that's got to be the toughest um month for these guys too Mm. so like just getting past that and then now you know you have one more month before everything kicks off and you're like all right like we kind of we're establishing ourselves our base or whatever they call it and uh now we just have to kind of like keep keep grinding it's Mm. crazy yeah it's just the weirdest time of the year for him to do it so yeah i want to start this off by presenting you with an award it is the 2021 Mr. Motocross Award. I feel like in terms of a, a contribution to the global motocross community, I feel like you're my guy for 2021. You fucking crushed it. I honestly feel like you saved the outdoors. Like you're per- you personally, with the edits that you did for Pro Motocross and then the Team Fried videos, I think you saved motocross. So I'm going to give you flowers on that one and uh, I'll get some kind of award made. Maybe it's an annual thing, but I feel like that's you for 2021, mate. Thanks. Uh, that, that's, that's awesome. That's, um, <laughs> yeah, it was, dude, I don't know. It's, it's crazy. Like for me, um, I just want to be at the races. I don't really, I just, the race and, <clears throat> and film cool shit i guess and um yeah thanks that that uh, means a lot to me um it's cool i wasn't in, i was unfortunately not able to do um supercross this year because there was still like covid restrictions and everything mm. um so it was kind of like um it was almost like a, a break for me but at the same time i'm like dude like what is going on like everyone's going racing and i'm just at the practice tracks trying to film trying to keep up with team fried vlogging and everything and um and i think that almost reset my motivation mm. to f- for outdoors um knowing that i had that gig and i was just so excited to be back racing like i think um well i was at salt lake for su- uh, supercross the finale and i was able to just witness that as a fan which was cool but um there's seriously like there's no better feeling um than being on the track and like right before the first main or first moto and they have the national anthem playing and everything it's like dude it's it's crazy yeah man i that's that's pretty interesting you say that because you kind of got forced to have the supercross season off and yeah it just seems like this year man there was just a crazy commitment on your end to putting out the content from team fried and then all the pro motocross stuff and like yeah honestly it i'd sent you multiple messages throughout the season just on like insta clips (laughs) and stuff you know just like little things i'm like fuck yes like this is reminding me of super uh, of motocross this is keeping this championship in the forefront of my brain just because you're making this fucking dope shit for everyone to watch and then every single monday me and rones would sit in here and put like the team fried vlog on the big screen from the weekend and yeah it just seemed like i mean i've always been a fan but it just seemed like this year everything just on your end went to a new level and and as well too like i know the film game obviously from filming yeah. for so long like that was essentially that's like if i did an apprenticeship in anything or if i did like a degree a college degree in anything it's like filming and uh the thing is like you i know with you you're not using any crazy equipment there's no like 
kind of heavy effects there's no like there's nothing that you're doing other than just like pure creativity like the it's film it's edit and it's music and it's like you're just doing the three most simple things really right and i think that that's like super hard to do so i think for for someone that like didn't get new gear and didn't get crazy cameras and didn't do all this extra shit it's like your it your creativity was just the thing that stepped up so big and that's pretty hard to do as a filmer yeah yeah thanks i mean yeah it was yeah it's crazy i i um obviously i would love to um one day get a red or just any big big camera i had a my first real like camera was um an fs 700 i'm sure you know how like big those things are and with like the detachable lenses um and then i kind of once uh the the new mirrorless cameras came out i got one of those and it just became way more compact and i'm like dude this is so this is so much nicer and um and then now i just have like the new like this new camcorder zoom cam and i kind of just use that for the most part and um i don't know i i think for this year i kind of i don't know it's 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 crazy i'm trying to like put my words together right now um no, that's all good like i i don't know it, it, it everything goes with trends too um and also i think over the years of um being able to do this filming and traveling and the people that i've worked with i've been influenced and like gained a lot of like things from everybody and um kind of brought that all together um and still doing that and i think this year it was just kind of a yeah just collectively Mm. all of that inspiration um a lot of skateboarding too um i work with like matt uh rice who yeah he's skates he's been skating his whole life and um even before that when i was doing verb and ever good with um eric shirk that like both of them like dude we were <laughs> we were going on road trips and they would go around like stopping to go skating so i'm just like chilling in the car or whatever i'm like dude fuck this but yeah at the same time because i can't skate so that's why i'm just like dude fuck this but at the same time um we watched like so many videos together and i get a lot of um, inspiration definitely from from skateboarding and um a lot of other things yeah dude you can yeah you can tell the the influence um hey i think we gotta reset some shit um I'll just tell yeah you. no worries no worries is it frozen still yeah. on my end yeah like can you see me come through or um it's yeah it's it's uh that we're pretty good right now oh okay uh, okay yeah, just just reconnect to my call jacob and then we'll we'll do the same what is this off of Venus, but it's like dude it hasn't happened in a while this is i don't understand why it exists that's fucking annoying it's so annoying sorry dude yeah. we Oh, sorry. No, you're good. Sorry this about is better that. right now. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what... That shouldn't really freeze like that. Our camera never does that. Um, yeah, so... I, yeah, it was I honestly... Guess, like I was trying to like... Yeah. I was trying to uh, like maintain composure, but I felt like I was just staring at a screen, so I'm like, ah, fuck. You know? But no, we're good. We're good no, now. you actually killed that. That'll be a nice, clean transition. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you, could, you can tell that there is a different uh like influences and stuff that come through and i think like your music taste and it's simple shit like this is me being like a film nerd breaking down the videos that i see this is more so team fraud um but like the decision to have real speed clips with no music just like little little things that that you're doing that just it starting to create like this real tom Genet style um and it's it's just yeah it's little details that that you're putting in there and again it's just like the simplicity of it is i think what what's sort of like making it so good as well yeah it's crazy that you say that too because just on the way here i was talking with my friend and uh i feel like um with video for me at the like at the end of the day i kind of almost want to like like 
I'm a dirt biker. So uh, I grew up racing and I watched all the videos growing up, movies and everything. And um, obviously like the filming and everything is cool, but at the end of the day, you're, you're trying to watch the rider and what they're mm. doing. So I, I feel like that's what I really want to showcase, you know, is um, just, yeah, just like kind of raw, like dude, fucking a raw clip of Tomac going for the pass at Hangtown that I got like of Cooper, like that shit was crazy. Sorry, Cooper, yeah. like, but like, you know what I mean? It was, <laughs> it was wild and like, just like little shit like that and um, raw moments, like just podiums and, and just, different different shit obviously like the slow-mo and editing stuff is really cool too and i think i'm well i'm really picky though with like music and how it has to like cut to the beat and stuff because i'm just strictly just hard cut i don't really do yeah. that much editing i'll put like a film burn over something that i feel is like a weird cut but um yeah that's that's i just do hard cutting and i'm just trying to showcase like um whatever i got from my perspective like i this this summer too i was really trying to um uh, kind of like remind myself, like, um, you know, this is like five or, well, no, definitely not five, but like as a girl, like as a kid growing up racing, you know, um, my hometown or local races were, um, the Northeast nationals and that's about it. I was able to go to MetLife later on and go to Daytona, but that was like, you know, the five times or four, um, times a year to see these guys in person and then mm. <clears throat> that's it you know what I mean you can see it on YouTube or whatever but at the time social media wasn't that crazy so now I'm almost like reminding myself like dude just think about the people that go to um, Washougal you know those mm. guys they're kind of far up northeast northwest and you know they're gonna have Seattle maybe going to, down to California to do a trip like that but some of those people they get to see those guys one time a year so mm. I feel like my role as being with a camera, having access is to kind of make these people like feel like they're there, you know, and um, just, yeah, I know. I, I love that you actually think you about it real quick. <laughs> I love that you actually think <laughs> about uh, it in those terms too, you know, like that it's not because uh, mm -hmm. I guess that all sort of adds to it is, you know, there is inspiration on that end to you, you know, I think that's like, there's some legitimate mm -hmm. art in that. Yeah. And like, uh, I don't know. It's, it's crazy. I, I'm still basic. I'm, I'm a super fan. You know what I mean? I'm just, mm. I love this shit. Like I trip out still to this day. Like I'm on the, tr I'm on the fucking podium with, you know, Fernandez, he just won the championship. I'm fucking right there. It's crazy. And, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's just what I, I try to, I guess, remind myself of that stuff. And I, and I, I, I always do, you know, I'm, I love mm. this shit in general. Um, like I don't, obviously money, you gotta have, you gotta make some money to kind of keep going. And I've been super grateful, um, with like all the opportunities that I've had, um, along this wave that I'm calling, I feel like I'm just big wave surfing and just trying to keep riding it right now. And, um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, um, it's crazy. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's a, wild. <laughs> I mean, it, it kind of is because like, you know, like you said, you, you're just this super fan young kid that grew up racing and then you know i mean i think we've probably got some parallels in the fact that you know both grew up racing both knew we weren't fast enough to be a pro both got a camera you know yeah. so i think it's a pretty similar <laughs> kind of story for a lot of people that kind of work in and around uh the industry uh but you know i think mm -hmm. the filming is probably it's such like a it's such a hard one because the, I feel like the end result is probably like the most glamorous end result. Like if you put out a really dope video, like a really dope team for ride that just blows up and everyone's pumped. It's like, that's hero shit. But in terms to, of actually yeah. creating it, it's the least glamorous. It's the most work. It's the heaviest yeah. equipment. <laughs> it's like the gnarliest <laughs> editing time. It's, you know, so it's uh i think being a filmer it's like almost high risk high reward kind of it's like you've really got to put in the most amount of effort but you also kind of get the most amount of shine if you dope at it yeah yeah it's crazy i think the um yeah the the end result is really nice um for me i feel like being there like 
dude, I got to stop saying like, sorry, I'm, I got to stop. I, I was telling myself <laughs> I got to stop saying that. Um, well, I need but for me, well, dude, I, uh, <laughs> for me, uh, just being there this past trip to Europe, um, the last, yeah. uh, la- last moto when they did their parade lap, I'm just standing there and I'm like, dude, what the fuck, man? I have like goosebumps and, uh, I'm like, this is fucking crazy. Like I'm, I'm here filming this shit in Italy, traveled all, all on my own. Basically. I met up with like my friends, um, Ben and Rob, um, Shut but up, it, it was just crazy. Just that moment. And, and all these, uh, just all these races, honestly, um, it just, it's crazy. And I, and, and with video too, you kind of have the best spot in the house compared mm. to anybody at those races, other than the rider themselves, you have the best spot in the house. You're able to see this shit up close and go anywhere and go up to the podium. And, you know, obviously, you know, you have to give these guys spaces. And for the most part, I try to just film the, just the cool moments in riding. I don't really give a shit about what, um, you know, clickers they're putting on the bike or to, I really don't give a yeah. shit. I honestly like growing up racing, dude, I just know where the throttle is and like the Kickstarter and RIP and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that, yeah, that's it. I just, I'm just trying to film dirt bikes and have Tomac go ripping by me or, Jason throw a six, scr- I don't know, just anything like that, you know, just what the people would want to see. I feel like or myself growing up as a dirt bike fan still am. I uh, just try to showcase that, I guess. So Mr. Motocross, what was your highlight <laughs> of the uh, 21 season? What's the most ridiculous shit that you personally saw go down? Give us the top 10. Cause there's like some Fuck. crazy moments. Uh, fuck. 10. All right. I don't know if I can do this like all in yeah, order, yeah, but yeah. Um, obviously still fresh on my mind. Italy was just insane. Um, th- that whole trip, it was, it was crazy. Um, that was super last minute. This was like maybe two or three weeks before the race. And, uh, the points was just getting kind of close. And I was like, dude, this is kind of, this is kind of getting good. And yeah. I didn't have too much going on. So I was like, one day I just said, I just like, fuck it. Let me look at flights real quick. And, um, I found a flight from LEX to Milan for 700 bucks. It was fucking crazy. So <laughs> I, I, so I and everything else on these select dates though, it was from the Thursday before the race weekend to the Thursday, right after the last race. And, uh, I was like, oh man, maybe I can stay a little longer. So I looked at other dates and everything else was like 2000 bucks. So, um, I just bit the bullet. I was like, fuck it. I'm getting this and then I'll figure out the rest after. And, uh, it was, it was, it was worth it. It was crazy. Like the whole trip itself, the Euro fans, the riders. Um, yeah, those guys too. It's crazy. And I think it's, it's kind of the same for Australia, but, um, they have so much respect for everybody in the U S and mm. it's crazy. Like, like these guys over here, are like gods to them over there. And it's like over here, we have the same amount of respect. I don't know if maybe this not in the whole moto audience around here, but I think for like really core people in moto, they do like, you have to give hats off to the euros and even mm. Australians dude. those guys are gnarly. And I, uh, I love that country. It's if I could move anywhere outside of the U S one day, if I can just like say, fuck it, I'm moving. I think it'd be Australia. Yeah, Australia's pretty dope, bro. <laughs> I can't wait till all you boys <laughs> come back. I was actually texting with Adam Bailey this morning. Um, he said they've got some pretty like massive plans for the um, those next like supercrosses nice. that they do over here. So I'd be pretty stoked. Yeah. Um, all right. So yeah, yeah. what was one of the crazy moments of the Euro trip? Because all right, so Team Fried yeah. Euro trip <laughs> vlog, music on point, riding footage on point. Shout out for including Jed and Wilson Todd, a couple of Aussie boys shredding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I will say the, I think maybe my favorite footage of the entire year was the, uh, oh fuck, I got goosebumps thinking about the uh, Caroli Coldplay. Like, fuck off. Come on. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Come, yeah, come yeah, on. Yeah, it was... It was wild. And to be honest, uh, 
that whole thing was kind of inspired. So uh, <laughs> this is super random. I've always listened to Coldplay growing up. Um, and it kind of fell off. Like, you know, it's just their, their like OG shit was really, really good. Um, and then it just got radio music and it's cool or whatever. But um, yeah, one day I was just going, I think I was on my way to go golf with um, Gage Shear Jeezy and his girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they were like, they were listening to the soundtrack and they played that Coldplay song. And I was like, fuck, man, this is this is pretty good. And I forget if this was before. I think this was before the Italy trip. And uh, I was like, dude, this would be really dope for uh, like an emotional piece with Cairoli. Like I already instantly kind of like thought about it. And um, yeah, it was it was crazy. That was like honestly the only part that I had figured out in my head. And the rest I was just kind of freestyling. Yeah. And the rest I just once I got back and looked at all through full footage, I kind of pieced it all together like throughout the weekend I was just um kind of in my head thinking about all right what am I gonna do with this and that Mm. because it was just one track for fucking I don't know how many races I filmed EMX and all those days so it was just one track and having to just try and fucking be a little creative with just that one area and all those dudes it was it was wild and um yeah the whole trip was crazy to meet all those guys. I knew a couple of them, but, um, yeah, it's wild. Like, I don't know if it's team fried or just me or whatever, but like some of those guys, I was able to see like hurlings and, uh, the day before. So I do stuff for racer X and, um, the day before we were trying to get an interview with him, um, after he won the first race and, um, we were in a line with a bunch of media people. And then somebody from the team was like, Hey guys, like not, not tonight. So we all had to dip and the next day, I think, uh, or whatever, a couple of days later, it was like an EMX day. So he was just chilling at the truck and, um, uh, I got to see him and I was like, yo dude, like, sorry for, uh, like bothering you that other night about getting the race. He was like, wait, why? He's like, dude, he's like, if you told me you could have just came into the truck and I was like, what the fuck? Like I was just tripping on that stuff. Um, and I was able to talk with him for a couple, a uh, couple minutes. He just asked how we were doing and him and. Yeah, it was wild. And a bunch of other dudes. Um, Like, I went to go to dinner with uh, Jed and Wilson, I think, once or twice, I think. Um, Yeah, they're good lads, dude. I fucking love them. Yeah, and uh, and that was actually my first time uh, formally meeting Jed actually in person. We've only messaged a little bit on Instagram and I knew of him and and he would kind of I think he would live through Benny snaps because he would always yeah. send it to Jed. So he knew obviously of me. And uh, yeah, we we fucking clicked right away. It was cool. And uh, and then I also met up with uh, Guadagnini, um, yeah. the Italian MX2 rider. And his friends and this whole year we've uh always been messaging him because he's he loves what we do here and he's trying to do the same over there with his friends yeah. it's kind of it's kind of crazy um it, they're like three guys i think and um they're all like best friends growing up like the two friends they don't like they'd like moto but they don't really come from moto yeah um one of them does excuse me sorry boys and uh and yeah, it was crazy. I went to go out to dinner with them because um, we talked all year and we swapped uh, apparel and, and yeah, and they're so Italian. Like it was wild, the language <laughs> barrier, but the respect was there. And yeah, dude, that kid's rad. He's really cool. He spends like the days uh, before the races at EMX just like filming other kids and giving them love. It's, it's cool. That's so rad. Yeah, I mean, uh, to branch off that, I think that, I mean, it's probably something that, like we'll get into like later, but I really think yeah. that you're entering this period and, or like you've kind of crossed this like threshold of like everyone knows who you are now. Like that you're not out of place being on, you know what I mean? Like guys coming up, like Hurlings knows who you are. Like everybody knows who you are now through like the work that you've done. So, I mean, as a as a like a fan and as a guy that's still like the kid that you still are you know what i mean it's like you'd be tripping out but there is like such a massive amount of respect like i don't know a person that you know doesn't like your work doesn't like the you know the videos that you put out that isn't on board with the team fried thing like i think you guys have legitimately created a movement you're inspiring like a whole new generation um of you know of like riders and young young kids and 
So, I mean, to go over there and to, like, hear that people have that kind of respect for you, like, that's not a surprise to me. Yeah, it's just, it's wild. Like, I guess we we signed up for it, or I signed up for it, you know, with the, the vlogging and everything that we did earlier. And um, I, I, my personality, I love having the attention around like my group of friends and stuff and I kind of like the attention but at the same time it's like really overwhelming and I'm not trying to like sound yeah, like oh yeah. fucking I'm at the races and everybody but yeah. it's a little overwhelming and I think especially this summer um, I had to hold it down on my own at the races because Jason was out and hurt and Matt was just he was with him so um, I was just on my own and then at every podium it's like deep fried and it's it's the craziest feeling, but also really overwhelming yeah. because also in the back of my head, I'm like, Oh dude, I hope I'm not like causing a ruckus or anything either. Um, and then I look back on my footage and I'm like, dude, this is fucking, this is cool. This is awesome. Yeah. Um, to have like support from those, from those people. It's, it's wild. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's, I don't know. Just a super fan. Uh, fun fact, actually, uh, Dean Wilson was my favorite rider growing up pretty yeah. much like when I was like really into racing, I had to have like the red gloves, the neck brace, everything like Dino yeah. was the guy. So when I first met him, that was like truly the day I was like, dude, this is crazy, crazy. And like meeting RC and stuff, that was really cool. But I think like meeting Dean, um, was wild. I don't know for some reason, just cause I'm like thinking of myself at, you know, the nationals in 2009 to 12 and even before, um, just all those guys but yeah just dean it was weird <laughs> it's uh Fucking dean it, yeah and then it, then you meet him and he's like the most normal dude of all time yeah 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 that's the thing too i uh like first time i was able to come out to california i was almost like i was st i was obvious i'm still a super fan but at the time i was like dude there's no like these guys are full-on athletes they yeah. don't fuck around they just they train that's it and then i was like oh wait like dude everyone's like just pretty normal <laughs> yeah it's not it's not i mean it's serious but you know what i mean it's it's uh we're all human you know yeah yeah and, and i think that that's one of the things that um like if anyone <laughs> we'll give out some free game on this podcast right now if you're a person that wants to <laughs> uh make it wants to be a tom janae or wants to fucking have a podcast or whatever it is it's like you've got to have this like reverence for people and you've got to have this respect and you've got to look up to them but you also just have to be a really fucking normal person it's like you know when you meet people like you can't fan out you can't like people that are at that level yeah. where like you want to fan out over them the surefire way to like make sure that you have like no further engagement with that person is to actually super fan out yeah. so it's like you you're one of the yeah. people that's got that balance figured out where it's like you're a super fan but you also have the ability to treat those people just like completely normal you know and i and i think that's like the point something yeah from this. yeah and it's crazy and i i feel like at the same time like as a writer or just even as me anyone that's like that talks to me um it's just super humbling. Like it's, it's crazy that there's people that are out there that actually like want to meet you or talk to you, mm. take photos, whatever. Um, and I think with riders, especially though, they deal with that so much at the races that mm. when they're away from it, they don't really expect it. So I think it catches them off guard. Like imagine if, I don't know, the first day that I ever met Jason at the track, it's like, yo man, can I, uh, can I get a jersey off of you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're <laughs> like, you know, like, yo, like, dude, like, before he's going out riding, he's like setting sag. I'm just like taking a selfie, like, shooting with Jason today. Like, yeah. you know, in my head, I'm like, fucking holy shit, I'm like filming at the test track right now. But, you know, you have to also be like, all right, like, you got to fucking just kind of play it cool at the same yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's just like trying to get a chick. Like, you ain't going to be going out and fucking. Yeah. You know, going yeah. too too hard on it. No one likes it. No one likes uh, yeah. someone that's too thirsty. You know. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm still working on that game right now, but uh, <laughs> yeah, there's sometimes you gotta just keep it cool. But <laughs> but no, it is it is pretty cool uh, to see. Like you can you know you can see the 
there's like a team fried takeover it's fucking out of control to watch and like even you know some of the pro motocross cuts that you have to do i can tell that you're like dude shut the fuck up and just give me some pro motocross shit like don't give me the team ride you know like you get, yeah. you, you're like mid you're like mid serious yeah. fucking basher podium shot he's like team motherfucking fraud and you're just like i'm but, like dude, i mean i love it i know i love it i'm here for it but i got a job to do <laughs> i know i should like maybe next year do two cuts of every fan that i film like they yell team fire i'm like yo can i get like a racer x or promoto or something yeah. you know <laughs> <laughs> and then honestly uh this year i only brought it at red but i had a handheld mic that i would use for the post-race conference um i brought it with me to the podium and i just wanted to just toss it around to fans and dude it was fucking so gnarly i was like there's no way i can run this shit anywhere else but like team fried yeah dude, i so, bet it was i bet yeah, it was it's... hectic yeah yeah it was and at the same time like i was saying before i was on my own it was so overwhelming um i think if i really took advantage of that whole deal and i interviewed actually a fuck ton of people it would have that that itself could have been a video you know mm. um and i think that's what we're trying to work on like we're gonna try and um i think expand i mean dude at the end of the day i'm just doing fucking videos for this shit and that's literally that's literally it i'm just trying to kind of build this um myself and the sport all together if that mm. makes sense just yeah. kind of nothing but just good vibes and let's like put stuff out and um yeah hopefully we can try and make things better next year and with um jason being on the new bike and stuff too that's going to be mm. i think really exciting I, I don't know i wonder how it's going to be i think um yeah i think it'll be crazy though yeah i think he's gonna kill it uh how old are you now 24 yeah see fuck dude you're still so young man like i forget <laughs> yeah. how, dude you probably were like 17 when i met you fuck maybe even younger yeah um so probably like i'm trying to think um i was like fully on the road basically like right after high school like i i didn't go to college i went but i got really lucky with that whole deal the whole shit is crazy honestly um i i went to high school and at the time i was racing like entering high school i was racing trying to go to loretta's for c class fucking <laughs> didn't make it and i was kind of getting over it and at the same time I was taking a video class at uh, high school and like the shit, the class was actually, it was really, really good. Like we learned everything. It was kind of college level stuff. So I was able to take advantage of that and do that for, I think three years in high school and, uh, and learn just a lot, just directly right off that. And, um, then just opportunities came. It, it was crazy. Like the whole verb thing is, is wild. Just, I think, I mean, right now, honestly, if the, if I never met Eric Shirk, I, I, that's it i would have none of this would have happened straight up so i have to like that's the one guy like give all thanks to for real because like if i never met him and he gave me the opportunity to uh create a video this was at my local track by the way they were um verb was like on a on a tour and the weekend before their filmer i think it was ashton at the time broke his oh, uh, yeah. broke something yeah so they brought in a filmer and um yeah, so they were kind of down a filmer and I was just some kid in high school like, oh man, you guys want a video? And I was just like, just, you know, just trying to beat out there. And I was, got the yes, where normally at every race, it's like, hey, sorry, but we're all good. We have everybody. So that right there, I, you know, I just ran away with it and made something. And Wes was like, damn, that was actually pretty good. Like, how old are you? Blah, blah, blah. And then the following weekend, they had their verb classic at mx207 shout out mm. danny stewart that track is bitching too yeah. and um <clears throat> yeah Wes was like dude um if you want to come up like we can definitely use an extra hand like we don't really have budget to give you we'll get you gas money and for me i'm like dude fuck yeah so um i was working at a sandwich job at the time a, like shitty high school deli job and um i remember i was like i, I brought down like my boss and i was like hey um, I know I'm on schedule this weekend, but I have a huge opportunity right now to go up to Maine and film like this dirt bike race for this company, blah, blah, blah. And she's just like, all right, like, like either you go there or you stay here. But like, if you go there, you're not allowed to come back here. And I was like, 
peace like <laughs> fucking i didn't even hesitate and at the same time my parents were all on board i wasn't even i wasn't even old enough to drive myself across state borders at the time really so my parents were like oh yeah yeah and and at the time um yeah i mean all of this too um is from my dad my dad's like a crazy moto fan his whole life so i i've been influenced definitely by him so for him Hearing that I had the opportunity to go film with Verb, he's like, dude, that's awesome. My mom was stoked. And they're like, well, we'll make a vacation out of it that weekend. We'll drop you off at the track and we'll go visit the area. And um, yeah, it was it was crazy. And then I was able to do Verb and, you know, so on and so forth. It's uh, it's, it's fucking crazy. I'm not, honestly, I'm not, um, <clears throat> I'm not like really, uh, I'm not religious, but um I am kind of a believer in like spirituality and like just shit in general with like life, everything happening for a reason. And, um, yeah, it just, it's, it's fucking crazy, man. It really is. Yeah. That, that, uh, I mean, in truth too, man, I owe, I, well, I feel like I owe my career to Wes as well. Like when I left. Yeah. yeah and Wes, sorry. I'd Shirky and Wes. Yeah, well, I mean, it's kind of like, I guess Shirky's the guy, but then, it, you know, Wes was the dude kind of running the shit. Um, but yeah, to me, it was like, I started filming, you know, the Aussie stuff and I just literally was like trying to copy verb. It was like, all right, I, yeah. there's no Australian verb. So that's the coolest thing in moto to me. So I'll just do that in Australia. And then I'd send on facebook messenger i'd send shit to west and be like hey man like if you guys want to run this on verb then have at it and uh and then they started running some shit and then i went there and it, you know one thing led to another and you know it's uh it was a fucking crazy machine dude verb like so yeah. many people yeah. that are it's killing wild. it in dude. this industry right now came through yeah. that like verb university yeah straight up and like uh, and on top of that, like everything was uh, for me influenced by verb as well, verb and everything, a little bit else I was able to see, but definitely verb and, and all these videos and, um, yeah. And you probably know as well working there, honestly, I think the first thing to do working in moto with verb was probably the best thing to happen because mm -hmm. it is a fucking grind like mm -hmm. Loretta's week or Minio's week. Any of those weeks, dude, bro, you're sleeping. <laughs> fucking like four hours not even and you're filming you've got shit to do post somebody's got to go to mcdonald's to post this shit on youtube and this and that and it's fucking crazy and then i think if you can like you know work off of that dude you can kind of fucking do anything at that point dude i totally agree alex i hope you fucking listen i got two grommies that are working for me <laughs> shout out to ronan he's been here a year and uh he's i feel like he's uh done he i think he's through the hardest yards of his uh the start of his career you know like because yeah you're coming out of school yeah and you're going straight into yeah. like gnarly shit like we don't have the budgets we yeah. don't have the you know like we don't have the support this ain't no, no like if we yeah. don't kill it every single month like there's just not money for the next month and you know to yeah. be to be young and to be thrown into like that environment and dude some of the hot to this day some of the hardest i've ever worked is at races with wes and you know we're going oh away God. we're going away this weekend to shoot the stuff with jack and it's like it's gonna be a pretty gnarly schedule this week and i'm gonna push the boys like in the same way that that we got pushed when we were uh yeah. working with verb because dude like some of those shoots we were doing were fucking crazy like we had so much yeah. content to post we had like the internet was shit the cameras we had to use like the <laughs> the computers were so slow like the whole oh, process dude. to you know to make the kind of videos that like a loretta's week or a moto spy or a you know you're doing verb platinums as well as doing red bull content yeah. and it's just like never fucking stops it's like at some point for 24 hours a day it feels like there's someone at a computer editing and i mean they're some of the yeah. favorite times of my life honestly dude and i had like yeah. no oh, money yeah. <laughs> i just had like a camera a backpack and we were just wherever the fuck we were filming and that was that was life yeah dude it's crazy you know what for me with verb um i was kind of on the end of it at that that era of verb so i was able to work with wes on a certain shoots 
And every time I was just stressing the fuck out. And uh, I was just dude, working my ass off just to make sure I was, you know, fucking impressed Wes, you know. And uh, yeah, that, all that shit, though, is crazy. And then after that, um, yeah, I think I think if you went if you were able to work in that environment, dude, you can bro, you can you can do anything. And those guys, I feel like they definitely got a bunch of credit. But dude, the shit that they did during Loretta's week and everything before even I was like filming I mean, it's crazy. They were putting out, sh- like, bro, you had s- moto recaps, um, a bunch of shit. And honestly, even uh, MXPTV, Matt Wozni, he was a one-man team, too. Like, that's fucking crazy. He was on his own out there with a camera, and he's fucking putting up battle re- battle recaps, crash recaps, fucking everything. And on top of that, he'll probably put a music edit at the end of the weekend. I'm like, bro, does this guy, like, sleep, like, what the hell? It's crazy. Those that those days, it's 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 crazy. And uh, and now too with Instagram, there's not I feel like the same amount as um, it's a different grind. It's a totally different grind. I think it's still a grind, definitely with um, social media and and there's still client work as well. Um, but dude, that shit back in the day, like you can go on YouTube right now and go watch recaps from fucking 2010 motos of amateurs and probably find a bunch of shit yeah yeah dude it was uh yeah it was a crazy time and that that was like a pretty gnarly apprenticeship to do and and i mean i like to the technical workflow of this podcast nowadays i mean i've got the exact same mentality like you know building this studio out and then the computer side of it and like the way we organize our files like i still name the files in the way that wes names folders you know so it's like all my shit is archived even in the same way so for me yeah it was just the most valuable apprenticeship that i could have done is working with those guys like seeing i mean dude there was there was a time we were shooting uh we were shooting moto spy at one point uh so that was like one of the series that we were doing and then wes was shooting war machines and remember do you remember in war machines like the phantom clips of jason and and kenny doing those whips yeah so that phantom dude i didn't have batteries for it so i had a fucking a honda generator and i was running around with a phantom flex in one hand and a generator i heard this story (laughs) in the other one dude and it was like two 20 minute motos i was fucked like and we drove we drove from uh ricky's house the day before to get there so it was like eight hour drive from florida (laughs) uh, from basically georgia to florida uh and then you know straight onto the track at Alden's, and it was just this like psychotic level of work and then you'd go play around in golf (laughs) and then you'd sit and edit all night and then you'd do it all again tomorrow yeah And then on top of that, like if you have one battery, you, you, maybe you're probably good for the first moto, but it's pretty fucking low for the second one. So you're trying to charge it as quick as you can. You're like, all right, fuck, uh, 54%. All right. Yeah, that's probably good enough. Let's run it. Oh, dude. Yeah. It was, it was good times, man. But I think, I think you're right. Like, yeah, if you can kind of get through that grind and, and like, that's one thing, that's one thing I will say that with like film kids nowadays is that they like, they want money straight away they're mm-hmm. like everyone's got a fucking day rate everyone's got their yeah. expect it's just like dude eat some shit for a minute like l- prove yeah, yeah. prove what you are Straight actually up. worth because it's like there's guys out there that have really really fucking you know grinded hard for yeah. this and it, it takes a long time to get good like legitimately good you know yeah and it, uh, yeah it's crazy like i feel like too um for me, my biggest gig kind of to kind of get my name, my whole goal was, um, especially with my Instagram, my first one, I had to delete it like 30 something thousand followers, but <clears throat> I was bummed. But at the same time, like my goal with that was just to establish myself and have the industry, people in the industry know who I am. And then they're like, hey, we can contact him for this or whatever. So, um, I feel like my first like big thing was, uh, probably two stinking with stink dog. Like that shit was, that was crazy. And, um, yeah, I can't give it thanks enough to him and everybody else involved in that. Um, 
Dude, that yeah, that summer was wild. And I think what that was what 2016, I think. So, fuck, man, I was young, man. I was I wasn't able <laughs> I wasn't able to drink or anything. And uh, dude, I'm pretty sure I don't know if I could get in trouble for this, but <laughs> I had a fake ID at the time. And uh, dude, I was so fucking ballsy with it around Stank too. And uh, I was like, <laughs> it was in Vegas before the outdoor started. And dude, I was just running that thing everywhere. I was playing in slots and I was like, yeah, fucking fake ID. <laughs> it was bad. But that whole summer in general, dude, it was it was crazy. I was able to hit the road majority of the time with them. Uh, there was a couple of times where I would fly back home. Um, but yeah, that shit was a grind. And two, I think it was awesome just to be uh, with the privateer grind. You know, it's not like you can just fucking show up to a dirt bike race and you just start shooting rocks in, in the team like you kind of, you know, got to work your way in there. And, you know, that was, um, it was, it was cool. I think that's like a, that's a good point too, man. Cause like, if you, if you're a filmmaker and you want to make dope shit, it's like anyone can make rocks and look good. Anyone can make, you know, the factory life look good. So they, to get in and, and do, you know, like the grind and be creative with, you know a privateered team and you're not having all the sexy shit you're not getting all the don't rise and you're not on the podium spraying champagne like if you can figure out how to make that yeah. a vibe then that's some creative shit yeah 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 definitely and that's dude that shit was crazy it was a vibe it was definitely a vibe and um i think we all did a really good job just taking advantage of that whole opportunity stank wrote his ass off on the mm. 125 um Gillen was running the wrench like dude that whole trip and it's crazy because it still kind of feels like yesterday mm. um that whole trip was wild we dude i think the number one meal ate on that trip had to be popeye's chicken tenders 100 <laughs> percent fucking stank and me got along real well with that shit we were always down to go do that and uh like biscuits and gravy in the morning for breakfast like that's right there and um honestly i wasn't really a big iced tea fan but that right there that summer jared loves unsweet iced tea and uh that was his go-to and like fans would bring it to us and stuff and it's funny because jason loves that shit the same bro i i'm surrounded by unsweet and iced tea everywhere i literally <laughs> that's dude, good though i don't mind it eight years in america i never drank sweet tea one time <laughs> no unsweet not sweet oh yeah but even i just never yeah. drank any. yeah no I was sugar. just like ah oh, this is yeah really, Damn, this isn't i'm a not thing really a tea me. guy yeah yeah, yeah, give me some English breakfast. I'll drink it here and there. Yeah, late <laughs> night, English breakfast. <laughs> I'm, I'm down for that. <laughs> English breakfast. Uh, I was with Ben and his brother in Italy. And fuck, those guys are so English. <laughs> they, dude, I love What was it? It was like Benny, porridge? Man. We got some porridge. <laughs> yeah, dude, I love that fucking uh, Me guy. too. Um, yeah, the, was nice. Dude, I, I, I will say... Oh, sorry, sorry. Oh, no, go no, ahead. You go. You go. It's your podcast. Um. I will say, dude, I fucking love being around uh, other English speaking countries, whether it's South Amer South Africans, English, yeah. Aussies, Kiwis, dude, I fucking love it. I, I feel like I'm always just so like, just pumped to like talk to somebody from there. And uh, especially, well, Australia, Eng I mean, all those countries, everyone's so nice, I feel like from there. Um, we're all, ni I feel like we're pretty nice here. Um, but fuck, it's just, it's just uh, it's cool, and I love the slang. I love the Aussie slang. It's fucking, I, I, it's fucking I, I, sick. I sick wonder, ass. I wonder what it is though. Like I wonder, because I mean, I definitely felt that when I lived over there, everyone was just so pumped to be around Aussies and like party with Aussies, and I don't like. I don't even, I don't know if it's just a bias that you guys have. It's like a confirmation bias. So it's like that story is like so told that as soon as there's an Aussie around, it just like you instantly switch into that gear. No, for, for me, I don't even, uh, I don't know if I really, like, obviously I feel like if you look at like Nitro Circus, half those fuckers are yeah. Australian, like you're yeah. crazy, you guys are crazy. But at the same time, uh, I don't know. You just get that vibe from um, anywhere, like especially in moto i guess it's different because they're pumped to like talk about team fry and stuff but um you just get such a like good good vibe from uh people down there and when i went for the first time um it was sydney in what 17 I so, think? yeah it would have been like 17, yeah 17 and uh me and shirky went there um like for two weeks before the race 
So mm. I got to just chill and cruise around Sydney. Dude, it was, it was sick. It was sweet as. <laughs> sick as. <laughs> uh, I definitely, the, the before we get fully off the topic of like the trips and kind of being young and whatever. Yeah. There was one one like cool thing i mean i partied and stuff in australia when i was like younger but there was something pretty rad about the way that we would all work like fuck and then party like fuck as well and it, it was such a yeah like it, that was something that uh yeah i'm like i'm glad i experienced that level of just fucking carrying on you know like everyone having For fake me? ids and like going to strip clubs in like every single town in america yeah. like it was just and then i think then like, you go on like the upper level of parties like really dope monster parties or really dope red bull parties oh and, yeah you know there, there was times after straight rhythm where like red bull would give you the party bus with like a fucking credit card and a driver and you just spend yeah, and six just... hours driving around <laughs> la in a party bus and you'd start with like 15 people on there and by the end of the night it was fucking packed yeah so it's like i don't know there was a there was a pretty dope balance of like work hard as fuck and then party hard as fuck too i think there's some like good lessons in that and especially to do it when you're super young yeah yeah it's it's crazy for me uh last thing about australia i feel like it's a perfect combination between a little bit of yeah, not even like European, but like kind of just like a different foreign mentality. I think anything outside the U.S. is just the U.S. is so different. I feel like yeah, um, with just all the shit that we do, like there's no there's no really cafes or pubs that we go to just to have like lunch or whatever, grab a drink. Like it's yeah, either you go out to eat or you go out to the bar and get fucked up all night. Like it's one or the other. And I feel like. Um, Australia has that nice balance of uh, when I was there, at least of that side of um, being able to go to a pub or whatever. But it's also like California. Almost. It's fucking mm. beautiful everywhere I've been to. I thought it was awesome. And I haven't been to the Gold Coast yet. And I need to go because I just well, that's where got, everyone tells me to go. So you I got a room <laughs> at the Gold Coast. You got a studio you can work out. Of. You can do whatever you want when you get here. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll suss it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got all the fucking <laughs> <laughs> yeah australia definitely has it's a european influence though because so many of like our population are migrants from from europe so yeah. i think that you know the italians really brought over like the cafe coffee culture uh the food here like there's a huge emphasis on food and then i think you've got like that english kind of pub culture um but i mean yeah like pretty yeah. much fuck every morning i go to the same cafe and i get like a bacon egg roll and my flat white and i kind of like yeah. sit there and i read yeah. the news and then there's like local people that are there every morning as well and i see the same dog and i see the same couple yeah. and I, you know you sort of say good day and it's like it is a there yeah. is like a very different vibe there was one thing that i kind of yeah. missed when i lived in america to be honest you uh oh really i feel like so i feel like in America, there's never really much time for people to just stop and like take life in. Mm. Whereas in Europe, sometimes it's a little too much in Europe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they're closing, like America's awesome with being open all the time. Yes. Um, it's a pain in the ass in Europe where you have to go, especially with dirt bikes, dude, like fucking these guys will ride until like, let's say one in the afternoon and you haven't ate lunch yet. You probably, well, if you're European, you probably brought your lunch. So that's <laughs> a problem too, yeah, yeah. but you, you leave the track and fucking nothing's open. Yeah. So like, that's a pain in the ass. But at the same time, it's also nice because like these people are actually like, they're kind chilling. Of fucking enjoying life at the same time. You're, yeah. you're not just like, go, 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 go. Yeah, dude. And the, the thing that I noticed in America that actually kind of like it bugged me was in Australia, people just show up to your house and mm -hmm. you don't have to make a plan all the time. Like I, I'm That's not awesome. a real like planning person. I'm not like, okay, we'll meet here at two o'clock on Friday and it's Monday. Like, no, I can't. I, I'm, I'm just not that far ahead in my yeah. life. And me, it's like, too in australia people just fucking call into your house or they'll just show up at your work and then they bring you a coffee and you just take 20 minutes to sit and have a chat and i just like yeah i just 
didn't really hang out with that many people in America because I was just like, I just feel like it's too fucking planned all the time. Like, I don't, I'm not going to call yeah. you and be like, hey man, so are you free like next Wednesday at two? I'll come and yeah. it's just like, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I really, I wish there was more of that aspect. Um, Like we live in Laguna Beach right now. Uh, so that's like more of a small town and there are cafes. So I, I've been down there a couple times and, uh, it's been kind of nice to kind of sit down and just have like a coffee espresso and just like, you know, just it's the morning and fucking wake up and just, you know, get ready to get your day started, watch people go by and everything. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's wild. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I feel like it always is here, which is at the same time. I mean, it's good. It keeps us on our toes, but I almost wish there was, um, sometimes a little bit of a balance, but at the same time, I can't be sounding like I'm fucking complaining because I get to live in California and film sick ass dirt bikers for a living. So I can't, I can't complain. I'm just saying life in general, you know what I mean? I think as a society, it'd be nice, but um, yeah, I, I can't complain. I get to fucking chill sometimes too. Like when they're done riding, I'll go back and <clears throat> go make whatever video from the day or whatever. And then I, I've got some chill time at, in the evening, afternoon. So I can't, can't complain. Um, yeah, nah, I feel like, I feel like you got to figure it out. Um, to, so to go back to the Europe stuff, the, uh, so you got yep. the Caroli, Coldplay, fucking smashed it but <laughs> you might have one upped it with that hurling segment like my brother said to me so like this is when you know you made a dope video this is okay this is my radar for when someone's made a dope video my brother doesn't really watch shit he doesn't have instagram he's not like on social media my brother walked into the office and goes have you watched the team fried europe vlog yet and i was like uh <laughs> nah <laughs> i just didn't even know it was up and then he's like cunt the hurling segment is the most bullshit thing you'll ever see in your fucking life <laughs> he's like and then he, he made a really good point he's like dude no one just like follows him for sections so that you can just watch him ride in that yeah, way that's yeah, like yeah, not yeah. a tv broadcast and some of the fucking riding in that clip dude. is so retarded so retarded dude it's I'm just like up. what the it's fuck are up, you bro. doing bro yeah dude it's it's fucked like the one clip this is the first like practice like the first time i was able to film him the fast ass fast lap i put up on instagram and uh i just seen him coming and i'm like oh this fucker's on a good one right now i'm like fuck this i don't give a fuck who's coming after this i'm filming this shit but at the same time i'm trying to keep an eye out so i got a little shaky at some points but uh, yeah, and like that's kind of going back to the skateboarding influence where in skateboarding and in, in, in parts and raw parts, the focus is on like, you know, the feet and what like the skater's doing and all this shit, you know what I mean? It's like, and that's what I try and I want to show. Like, obviously I think when you're making an edit, it's nice to, there's those nice like transition shots or beauty shots, but at the same time, it's dope just to see fucking Ferrandis rip ass like fucking balls or whatever on a 450 this summer just any of these guys so like that um that first moto of hurlings i noticed i guess it was what first or second lap he went down and he was like 15 i was like all right i'm keeping a fucking eye on this fool because this shit's about to get crazy and uh dude it, it was wild it was wild he almost passed him with the lap if he had one more lap he probably would have he probably would have gone fed i think he is fucked up gnarly <laughs> <laughs> dude it's so fucking true he really is dude there's like to see it like firsthand too it's wild yeah there's one there's this one shot where i think it's a first lap and then it's like landing off a jump and then there's like a single that he yes. hits on the inside of the single and he just dude <laughs> i'm like <laughs> what the fuck are you up to what's the Bro. decision yeah, making it's... what's the decision making in yeah. his head where he's just like, I'm going to fucking send it into this thing. And like, dude, I slowed this shit yeah. down on YouTube, like frame by frame. You literally see him land yeah. in nothing. Like, it's just a big piece of shit that he lands in. And then the mm -hmm. fucker is on the stop. He lands in this thing. 
the dirt just explodes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and he passes two yeah, of the best and, dudes and in the world. His, Mind blowing. And his bike's so fucking down. I have that clip. So most of all of my stuff I normally shoot will be at like 120 uh real like 120 frames but i'm able to capture in real yeah, speed yeah. with audio so yeah. then i have able to have variety so that clip i use in real speed but i i think i did slow it down like the night of the uh after the race we went back to the apartment and i think i showed benny and i was like dude fuck look at this shit bro are you fucking kidding me like it's it's wild it's wild and i think i've had a couple of those moments too this summer like the Euro trip, I so I will say I said about like the Euro trip being awesome, but um, fuck the outdoors itself was insane too. Um, I'm trying to think what was some good races. High Point was awesome. That three way battle, um, dude. There were so many. There's so many good races, and uh, yeah, it's it's crazy, dude. These guys are fucking crazy. They're I try to think of myself. I used to think I was so, <laughs> dude. They are, and I, I used to think like. When I was a, like, <laughs> I thought I was a sweet fucking sea rider and, uh, like at my prime, you know, and, uh, like riding, I thought I was like so good. And then I look at these guys and I think I'm older now and I'm able to like realize a lot more shit. I'm looking at, I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Yeah. Like one day there's, uh, I was at the track, Jason said something and I, he was like giving feedback to the team or whatever. And he was talking about this rhythm section that goes into a 180 degree turn uh, like jumping into the turn, he was talking about upshifting to fucking carry that momentum basically. And in my head, I'm like, bro, I've never thought of upshifting going into a corner a day in my life when I rode a dirt bike, just yeah. like little shit like that. <laughs> Maybe I sound like an idiot right now, but like, you know what I mean? Like just, just in, at that speed and all that stuff, all those guys, it's dude, it's wild. The, it's the wild. crazy dirt thing bike, is, man, is like... <laughs> I've been riding dirt bikes damn near 30 years. I can't do one thing as good as Jason Anderson. Like, it's just, there's not one, there's like 30 years, 30 years. Can't do one thing as good. Literally. Dude, I, I wish I could just like, just one day hop on a dirt bike and just throw a fat ass whip off a freestyle <laughs> ramp. Just like gnarly whip. Fucking just like session out for 20 minutes. Be like, yeah, yeah it was dope. Like, <laughs> fucking. <laughs> I like, can't whip a dirt bike, dude. I'm a you, bar turner. Could you imagine being Berriman or Axel and just like have Like, that, imagine their that eye, ability. like what they're seeing. <laughs> it's so hectic, dude. Dude, yeah, it's it's crazy. There's this uh, uh, dirt bike gamer guy that um, he makes like videos for like the MX Sim, MX bike stuff. This guy Thailand, and he made a um, a uh, sorry a tutorial on how to throw an oppo in the fucking game. And he used shouts out to him. He used one of my shots of Axel um, to describe like the motion of it. And dude, I've never really like fully looked at it, but like he was doing this like turn up. Dude, they're like, they carve the ramp. It's crazy. You know, like they're not going just straight at it. Like it's bro. Fuck that. I'm good. I'll film this shit. I'll get a cool shot or whatever. I will, I'll take it in, but fuck that. Yeah, man. They're, they're just some heavy, <laughs> heavy dudes. I, I, uh, look at hurlings and I wonder if anyone's ever ridden a bike faster on a motocross track. I don't know that. I don't know that someone has. I, I honestly, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Ah, uh, I uh, dude, he's fuck. I think for thirty minutes too. Let's it's add tough. that. It's it's tough. Like right now, Hurlings is probably maybe at his peak. I don't really know, but he's fucking good. But <laughs> I was looking last night. We were watching uh, 07 Supercross with like James RC and uh, Reed and dude. We were just like, it was just like the recap of the season or whatever. Yeah. Dude, the shit that Stu was doing on that 450, bro, it was kind of fucked up. Like he did this one thing <laughs> where uh, he, I, I forget if he got sketchy. No, no, no. He didn't get sketchy. He made the pass on LaRocco on the inside. He rolls and like tries to double, but lands on his rear wheel. And there's like three more fucking jumps yep, basically. Yep, yep. It was kind of mellow, but he just wheelies through it, bro. And I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, I, but to answer your question, I, I think 
Fuck, man. I don't know. I don't, I'm going to get hate for this if I like say he's the best guy in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's pretty damn good on a dirt bike. I think he's pretty damn good. And it'd be sick to, if we can, you know, one day come up with some simulation shit where we can put up all these guys against each other. See what's up. Let's yeah. Get RC I mean, against uh, Hurlings. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just think that the game has just elevated in a pretty massive yeah. way like and and hurlings i mean the thing I, I think as well like i really hope that soon we're gonna have him on the podcast like i'm trying to make it happen but it's like that yeah. dude has the gnarliest ego in the world and i don't mean that in a bad way i mean that in like the competitive mm. sense of a dude that does yeah. not give a fuck about anything oh, else there is nothing else that yeah. that kid cares about he wants to crush some pussy on the side and he wants to fuck up everybody in the world at motocross and that's all that that's all he thinks about that's it there's nothing else yeah. and it's like he's so one-dimensional in that sense and he's so fucking good and i think that we're just seeing yeah we're seeing those results in like the way that he can ride a dirt bike like it is psychopathic yeah. how fast he can go yeah and like um at the gps this year i one thing i noticed dude that guy pulls up to the gate and his helmet and goggles are fucking tinted and they are on dude <laughs> that motherfucker's not showing his face everybody else is like you know they've got their goggles off maybe helmet off or whatever dude that guy is like on his dirt bike and he's just staring fucking all right like f fucking go time I mean, granted, this those last two races, it really was fucking go time. But yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, he's bad dude. And no, and honestly though, the all those other guys too, like, Herlings oh yeah, is obviously, 100%. he's insane. But fucking Geyser and Fev this year, Geyser, bro, Geyser's kind of slept on, okay? Because the motherfucker has what four titles? Yeah, four true. world titles. True. Like, bro, he is gnarly too. And, uh, yeah, it was unfortunate for what happened to him that first, uh, race weekend with like the cutting the track, but dude, he was still in there and he fucking made Fev's job, um, harder. And he definitely, he was trying to add some pressure to hurlings too. Like he was just in there fucking it up too. It's crazy. There's one clip, uh, from last year's GPs. Like, I feel like it was a Wommel and there's this clip of, of Geyser and I think it was Geyser and Fev and Geyser comes through and he like hits this whoop section, like sand roller section. And it yeah. literally looks like he's on a magic carpet and the bike just is moving under him and he's completely dead solid. I'm pretty sure Pete Fox shared it on his Instagram and it was just, he only showed just that clip. So his Instagram was looping it. Yeah. You just, you almost can't believe what you're seeing. And like, i was yeah. showing a friend who she's she never watches she's like literally never seen motocross right and i was actually i showed her the yeah. team fry, like the euro fry thing with hurlings and even she was like wow why is he so angry like that's just watching him ride <laughs> like on the bike right yeah yeah on the bike helmet goggles tinted yeah. you can't see him yeah but you know that he's yeah. fucking angry like how does it translate it's the bullet dude you know it's fucking jeffrey hurlings yeah about that that whole it's crazy the the thing too with the euros is like they just seem so prepared to die <laughs> in like a crazy way dude, dude. i like uh, that's the one thing the thing with uh, everyone's always asking like why don't those guys come over to the u.s well fucking the u.s you gotta learn how to do supercross like that shit is gnarly and those guys are having outdoors dialed uh on gnarlier shit i mean sorry no offense guys but like i feel like in my personal opinion some of the shit those guys train on and race on bro like mm. uh apparently it was a little different this year than how it was before but like every track they go to and outdoors is like the same um kind of like Prep. prepped a little bit yeah. the same if that makes yeah. sense you know the dirt and environment makes it for difference but like dude those guys in outdoors that like at gps i mean um 
Bro, they have to dial in sand settings, hard pack settings, fucking fucked up France, St. John Angele going up and down a fucking mountain. You yeah. know, like it's just, it's crazy. They ride on gnarly shit. And um, yeah, the, all those guys, man, like the, the EMX scene, MX2, all those guys are rad. And listen, I'm, I'm, we're talking a lot about Euro, but I still got hella respect for the US too. Like these guys are fucking gnarly too. It'd be sick if one day we could figure it out where these guys are actually racing each other at all times. Yeah. And uh, see if fucking's got it. <laughs> well, I mean, the real battle for me is Eli Tomac on his best day versus Jeffrey Hurlings on his best day. Like, Ferrandis. We'll get to him in a minute. Total G. Nothing but love. That dude wants it yeah. more than anybody else in America right now in outdoors. But in terms of like, let's say everyone has their best day ever. I don't think that you can go past Eli. And the best day ever Eli versus the best day ever Hurlings. God damn. And you know where I want to see it? I want to see it at Redbud because there's a little bit of sand and there's a little bit Oof. of normal. They're Oof. probably running a paddle. <laughs> like that would be the, that's the showdown that I want to see. And it's got to be no injuries, no fucking nothing. The bike set, like literally the bike's perfect. They're perfect. I want to see that head to head. Dude, I, I want, I really want to see everybody at their 250 peak race each other. <laughs> Fucking everyone, dope. dude. We, I'm talking, bro, I'm talking Cooper on the Star Yamaha, fucking Dino on the PC, Hurlings, dude, everybody, bro. Zach yeah. in his championship year. Fucking even Jason, like, dude, everybody, prime 250. That'd be the sickest race of all time. Because, like, I love the 450s, but at heart, I feel like, dude, I love the 250 races. Those things, yeah. are, they're wild. Like, those kids, they're... Cause, uh, <laughs> I feel like in 450, the bike will definitely bite you a little more. A little more so Shout there's out probably a little bit ma more maturity. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yo, for real. And I think there's like probably a lot more maturity involved in the racing. Whereas in 250s, bro, Cooper Webb on his 250, what was this like 2016 or 17? I forget. Or 16, I think. I forget. Yeah. Anyways. Anyway, everyone knows what I'm talking about. Motherfucker was gnarly, bro. Like, a second <laughs> moto in outdoors. Like, he is letting that thing eat. And, like, he's still young, and their aggression's in there. The fucking bike's barking. I, I love the 250s. It's rad. Like, this year, filming Jet and Justin Cooper, that shit was so sick. Was, yeah, everybody, man. Everybody, honestly. Not even those two. Just everybody. That was definitely one of my questions was, like, what what's it like from someone that's been around the sport a really long time now filming and on track and like you're always around the podium like you know what you know the baseline do you think the jet has like shifted the baseline <clears throat> as in like um like racing like 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 as i feel like probably more just like the fan perspective and like the the oh. there seems like there's a different vibe now and it's kind of because of him like everyone's involved in it so it's not yeah. like there's only love for him yeah. and no one else but it just seems like he's brought back like fandom yeah yeah definitely i think yeah he actually it was crazy what they did this summer and um excuse me um dude Danger Boy hasn't even gone to the pro ranks yet. Like, Imagine. if you think Jet was crazy, that shit's gonna be fucked up, bro. Like, it really is. Um, yeah, it's it's crazy. I've never really met Deegan or any of those guys, but like those guys, I mean, they they fucking they're crushing it, man. I'm I'm like watching like the live streams and everything, and that's all everyone's talking about is like one's Danger Boy and bro. That shit when he goes pro, man, it's gonna be it's gonna be big, bro. And I think. Um, everyone at the races supercross and outdoors are going to be pretty damn happy that he's at the races with jet too because jet probably will continue to probably build his you know um fan base and a bunch of other guys i think it's i think we're now also in this point um in moto where people are really trying to monetize off themselves mm -hmm. um and and create like a lot more you know bring in fans and and do a lot of sh more personal shit and um yeah i mean like it's yeah it's crazy i mean well, jet too he's kind of like the perfect like uh he dude he's fucking what 18 and he is like the typical 
American teenager that every yeah. girl wants to fucking date. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's the TikTok hair, everything. No disrespect to Jet, but you know, um, like it's it's what that's what they want. You know, it's crazy, and it works. And, and so just, fucking let's keep on running. Big time, dude. And to speak on like the danger boy thing, right? This is actually something I've been I've wanted to say, but I just like haven't had a chance to say it. But there was like a clip when he first signed like the star deal and there was um on pulp they were talking about like dude these crazy these six figure deals for like this amateur but hey his star deal is worth less than probably a third of one month youtube ad rev hate to break it to everybody if you yeah. think if you think Bro. the danger boy went to fucking star yamaha for money you're tripping they're making fucking bank off their youtube channel and so they should this is not and this is not uh, anything against that get that fucking bread i'm all about it but if you think yeah. for one minute yeah. that they give a fuck about sign on and this this is going to be like an unprecedented like i actually think this is a way bigger deal than anyone's thought about right you are not going to be able to pay danger boy more money as a manufacturer as a fucking sponsor as anything than what he can make on his own do you know how much power that is going to give him as a writer to like do what he wants to do and think about that in terms of like winning you can just do whatever you think you need to do to win so like you're you've got this rider that exactly what you said they've monetized themselves and that freedom is just gonna eliminate so many problems that have plagued the best riders in the world for their entire career because they're gonna be completely financially uh independent and guess what i don't think jet lawrence is gonna be that far behind hrc starts trying to pull yeah. some bullshit on jet <laughs> jet's just gonna be able to go cool man i'm fucking good we'll go do yeah. our own thing and so i think that the industry like is gonna change in a massive way man and i think that it's what it's like almost like a pandora's box you know once it gets opened then i just i don't think that the industry is going to be the same so like those two boys it's going to have massive implications for how the like the industry kind of runs its show you know and honestly dude yeah. i think that that you guys and and jason have real like you really lubed up this whole situation of you know like guys creating their own content having their own brand within you know within the like a brand within a brand kind of deal um and yeah like this whole landscape is kind of blown wide open now as far as i'm concerned yeah yeah definitely yeah it's uh, see i think too with uh team friday was a like a good way of jason being involved but also doing its own thing so he doesn't have to be fully linked to it and then we can kind of just it's our own thing and like we're kind of i mean in a way monetizing off of everybody because i'm filming everybody at the races mm. and yeah it's, it's it's crazy and uh i was just thinking when you're saying like talking about like the deegan and stuff it's crazy you have like this route with uh jet obviously and both deegan and jet they are crazy talented on a dirt bike but they have this like crazy fan base um mm. from outside of dirt bikes coming in Whereas in, you have like a Rider D that's coming up too, bro. That's been like the golden child too for since fifties, like Rider D, Rider D same with like AC and all these guys. It's like, there's these two different like things. Um, yeah, it's just something I just thought of. It's crazy. I think those yes. kids it's dude, I will say, uh, the minis like amateurs coming up, like the Rider D, Deegan, Romano, dude, all these guys, this shit's going to get gnarly in the two fifties. I think oh, pretty big. good big time man like i think that i think we're almost gonna have to go to like an emx type deal because where the fuck do Dude. they go where do they go there's too many good guys yeah yeah it's wild i, I think 
dude, that'd be so sick. I, I wasn't around uh, before for outdoors when it used to be like two days or whatever. Mm. But fuck, that'd be kind of awesome. Like I, I say that now and then I'm going to like hate life when it actually yeah, happens. Yeah, yeah. But uh, sometimes like, dude, that's something I appreciated at the GPs was that it was over. Well, they were doing actually same day schedules for um, certain classes, but it was still over a two day period. And I kind of wish it was the same um, at outdoors. That'd be kind of rad. Like, I know they used to do the 125 um, race before the motos. Um, but fuck, let's like, let's bring those guys out there. I'm pretty sure, uh, I don't, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure they're supposed to do something like that for Supercross this year. Oh, yeah. With like 250 All Stars. That'd be sick. Yeah. I mean, they definitely need to. I think, so, yeah. I, I just, I, I would be so down to watch a Supercross race uh the broadcast where i like didn't have to watch lcqs and like just give me the heats give me the finals and then give me like an emx like a all-stars final instead of lcqs you know what i mean like i, I yeah. don't know the i don't know the way to do it but i just give me the racing that means something all the time like heat races are dope because but even the heat races like you're just settling for a third like I want to watch points, points, points. Like, give me the fucking points. I mean, make heat races worth championship points. Like, that's what happens in Formula One. Like, you get qualifying points and you yeah. get, you know, you get a point for the fastest lap of the race. Like, we're so yeah. fucking stuck in the Stone Age when it comes to Supercross and the broadcast. I mean, obviously, I love the shit, but God damn, I feel like it could be so much cooler. Even, like, you look at, at yeah. Bercy when they do the, the one lap, you know dashes like show that's that. dude i was show just about to say that, that shit bro like bro can you fucking imagine back in the day uh that oh, the heat of the, super pole you dude it, oh stewie God, dude. on a fucking super pole that the was fuck actually worth points fuck out the fuck out of here <laughs> get porcel porcel on a 250 because oh. you would never really catch him uh during practice he was always like the last guy and you're like oh fuck porcel's like fastest like if you actually got to see what everybody could see what these guys do bro even now like dude Let's let's put all these guys out there because I mean you know they're all ripping on the test track and I guess essentially that could be kind of the same thing uh, at Super Bowl they're kind of on their own I don't know I don't fucking ride Supercross but yeah. I, dude it'd be sick it'd be so sick and yeah, get the points involved and shit yeah let's do that I mean heats and stuff are cool but at the same time um, I don't know in other motorsports <laughs> I feel like they just do what qualifying and then it's boom race time let's go. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm fucking here for that, for yeah. sure. Um, yeah, I mean, the when you guys started the Team for Ideal, what was the, like, original thinking behind it? Oh, fuck. Um, Did it turn, and has it turned out to, like, <laughs> anything like what you thought it would be? I don't, honestly, I don't even think there was any thinking into it. It was, like... Like Team Fried was just an Instagram DM group chat. <laughs> we really? were saying like fucking dumb memes too. I think yeah, I think Jason just named it Team Fried one day and it just like stuck. And then um <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know. I think it was Hangtown, right before like Press Day Hangtown, we were thinking of uh doing I guess these videos. I, it's crazy because it's kind of a little bit of a blur where I don't remember exactly what the the idea behind it was. It's like, yo, let's do these videos. And looking back on it, on it, they're pretty, I guess they're kind of funny, but they're pretty fucking weird too at the same time. And I don't know what exactly the whole process into that whole summer was. Like we were getting love from it. And the whole thing that like really made things bigger was, uh, destinations, like going to Netherlands yeah. and, uh, that, that was like, that was big for me. Like that was the, I will say that summer that was my like inside of my head that was the goal like fucking hopefully jason goes to designations and once he started talking about that too uh, about going over there and doing like a month long training with the team i was like bro like they've done um obviously team usa videos mm. back in the day with verb and everything and they were awesome but i i really want to i want this shit to be like dude these people in America wake up or it's already in the afternoon and it's like, fuck, all right, what did the boys do over there today? Mm. And I tried to just keep it consistent. I forget how many videos we did, but we did a good amount. I was trying to like every day those guys were riding. Um, 
I'd get back the whole, <laughs> dude, this whole program was so loose too over there. We were like staying in some like vacation park rental home shit. I don't know. We got there. There was, all right, hold on. Let me take this all back because I think this is pretty worth like talking about. So, so we go to, we land in Amsterdam September 1st and um, Shout out the plan Amsterdam. was to meet up with everybody to ride. Yeah, dude, great. That place is awesome. And the plan was to go to meet up with everybody and ride i think like the september 3rd or 4th so we got there a couple of days early to just chill out and just get also used to the time zone and everything and uh dude we get there we don't have fucking anything booked <laughs> so matt and i land jason's on another flight like two hours behind us i'm like fuck like i guess i just let's look up something we just booked up an airbnb literally at the airport in amsterdam for that amsterdam the stay that we were in got so such a sick pad like we were on the corner like right by the red light district on the canal like uh. honestly it was like couldn't have been better it was rad and uh then after that we had no rental car we took the train i think to eindhoven i forget actually i'm trying to think but we didn't have a rental car and then jason finally got one and fucking Jason being Jason wanted to save some bucks and we got the smallest <laughs> rental car. Dude, this thing fit like three people basically. And there was, um, there was four of us. Zach's um, practice mechanic was uh, everybody's mechanic that trip. So we, anyways, I would film those guys and come back to the vacation rental home that we were in and I would start importing all my shit. So meanwhile, it's importing, I'm waiting, waiting, try to start building stuff up like I'm like as soon as it's all done start editing and about like 30 minutes in I'd always get the call from Keith at the shop 30 minutes away to come pick him up cuz that we only had one car and I'm pretty sure I was the only one that could really like like drive stick like well ish oh, and no. um, or at least was I was putting myself into that position so I would go drive fucking go pick up Keith come back i'd lose an hour and then it's already like 6 7 p.m and i'm just trying to grind the shit away try and get it up by like you know a decent time just so that i can go to sleep and do it all over again the next day um yeah it was a fucking grind and it was i will say going back to what you were saying um that feeling once it's out that feeling right there once those videos were out and waking up the next morning and reading comments of people like fucking go get them this and that that was that was rad that was yeah really cool. i mean that's one thing like i i definitely I, I think the since doing the podcast it's become like really obvious to me how important it is to add to the culture and that you can mm. have influence like you can care about the culture and you can want to make content that makes the culture of the sport better and then it actually does have like a positive impact and i think that's definitely yeah. there's a massive cultural impact um on um the sport because of like what you guys did with team fried and it's it's because you care about that shit like waking up in the morning and seeing the comments and seeing that people are stoked yeah. like it's a pretty selfless action you know yeah yeah and that whole trip definitely was for the culture because i feel like um dude team usa when it comes to mx donations is almost such a like prestigious thing because yeah. all those guys get to race each other so everyone knows but then it's team usa and there's this little like little click that's coming in and everyone's like oh fuck like that's those guys over there and this and that so like i i, I like growing up knowing how prestigious it was for team you like Team USA going over there. I want to be able to like fuck it. Let's showcase it. Like we never get mm. to really see that much stuff of them when they go over there. Let's fucking show what happens, you know. And yeah, it was it was crazy. I don't really know. I, MXGP was pretty pumped, but I know like those races you're supposed to have like certain like li like <laughs> limits on like video length and what you can post and whatnot. Fuck <laughs> all that. Posted everything. <laughs> yeah. <And laughs> Fuck all yeah, that. We just fucking posted everything. I even, uh, I, this shit was so big that for the race, I flew out, um, Jared Conley from inner world of echo yeah. to come as a B cam. I, I needed a sec. I was like, dude, this shit's going to be so fucking big. Like I need to have a second camera. So I was like, dude, I flew him out and, um, yeah, dude, I mean, you, I'm sure you saw it. Like there were what yeah. 30 minute episodes of just like raw riding and shit. Just <laughs> shit was crazy. so. Fucking I don't think dope. I can do that at Supercross, but. <laughs> 
<laughs> nah, man. I mean, again, uh, too, like there was something just crazy about watching those guys try and figure out the sand. You know, like to to see Jason yeah. like kind of struggle. You know, like not not struggle, but he's just not as good yeah. as the other dudes, and he shouldn't no, be. He doesn't no, live no. there. But to see no. a, like someone that's so fucking good. And then you go like even like yeah. Caden the Wolf, you know, you see that little fucking shredder just yeah. ripping around there on the same day. So you're just like, wow, this shit really does hit different. Yeah, and it was crazy because they when they got there, um, their bikes weren't shipped. Weren't they were stuck at customs or some shit. So they first started riding, I don't even know. Fuck I mean, fuck it, who gives a shit? They were riding uh like the GP bikes over there that were like kind of different like pretty yeah. different there's fucking different buttons on that shit and stuff like <laughs> like dude this bike looks crazy and uh yeah they were riding it and getting used to it like they said this was tough and it looked fucking tough like that shit bro we have southwick here <laughs> southwick is yes it's sandy it's gnarly but it's just a lot it's very bumpy and fast and over there it's fucking deep and you're just like mowing yeah. that shit <laughs> yeah and uh Dude, and, and just being able to be around that the whole month, um, it was kind of crazy because I'd say about two and a half weeks into Jason and Zach training because they got there a little earlier, those guys were miserable. They were so over it. Like, they really? were so tired and just over it. They were just, fuck this. I remember, like, <clears throat> this must have been, I think if we stayed, okay, for four weeks, like, yeah, about two weeks in that Friday, the last day of the week that they rode, like they got back and dude, just fucking over it. I'm pretty sure we got into like a fight cause, with Jason because he was like just pretty, he was pissed off just from just, you know, how gnarly it was. You know what I mean? Um, but it's, dude, I mean, regardless of the result too, I think we made an impact that whole trip. It, it oh, was huge. crazy because Team USA, that, that like race, um, anybody that wore a team USA jacket around the p paddock or anything, people were just yelling team fried at them. Like fucking <laughs> Roger DeCoster is walking through the paddock and <laughs> some, some drunk guys just like team fried. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so it was, so it was awesome, dude. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. I mean, and I think, yeah, that just, it just speaks to like the, the impact that you guys have made. Does that, so then you get back from that trip. Do you think that's probably what like really legitimized team fraud? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Honestly, I think that was like the biggest, that was, that was big for us because the views and everything on YouTube as well were, were huge when we don't monetize anything on YouTube. Like, yeah. Cause I use all fuck like fucking music and everything. So like the goal is with that is just to kind of, give people like good shit on YouTube and then hopefully they can then go to our website and support us by <clears throat> buying apparel. I don't really handle that side of the stuff. I just do the videos and just, just try and keep the machine working, you know? Um, so after the 2019, uh, designations, um, it was, yeah, it was gnarly. And then it was the off season. So then it was like, fuck, okay. We just did like some crazy shit. How, how do we even top this or like keep up with this kind of stuff? So, um, which actually turned out pretty well because once he got back from Destinations, I think he took a little bit of time off. Jason did. And then we went straight to straight rhythm. He was going to ride the two stroke. Mm. So before that he was doing test track foot, like test track riding That's with right, the two stroke. With the two stroke. Excuse me. So, so that shit was going off. That was crazy. And like, you know, the momentum was building and building. And then after that was, um, New Zealand and, uh, Melbourne. Yeah. I'm pretty, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah 2019. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah. And that shit was crazy too. So like that momentum just kept building and building and that following, um, Supercross year, I had a gig to film with the team. So I was like legitimately allowed, um, to film at the races and, um, I never did any YouTube stuff though, like long length, but I, I did take advantage of that and gave like Jason like a video from his races and kind of like knowing that probably shouldn't do this, but fuck it. Like, let's show what the fuck we can mm. provide to this sport. Like with, with riders, not just myself, but fucking rocks. And why doesn't he have a, a guy that's filming him at all times? And you know, just shit like that. So, um, yeah, that whole momentum was like just rising and then COVID happened and that just kind of just like fucking, mm. uh, fuck, what do we do now? And um, 
And then it was just kind of, I don't know. It kind of felt like it, it slowed down and then started doing this uh, outdoors video that summer uh, with COVID. And those were doing pretty good. But like this year, I feel like it really revamped itself again and kind of, yeah, got um, got some attention. Yeah. Crazy. How, um, I, I remember, th this is kind of, it was always like sort of surprising to me in a way like that, team fried did the as well as it did purely just based on knowing jason like and there was a there was a time the first uh the second oz x when he was there and we were like talking on the podcast he was trying to convince dino to like do his youtube on the podcast like we're just sitting on the couch talking shit and then he's like this guy needs mm -hmm. to do his fucking youtube channel blah 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 and like he was saying he's like I'm, i should try and find the clip but he was like yeah man it'd be cool to do that but like i'm just don't have the personality to pull that off like i couldn't have a youtube channel you know like so he had mapped out in his head how this shit would work for somebody but he just didn't think that he was the guy that had the personality to carry it uh so then obviously you fast yeah. forward to now and team fried's fucking massive and i mean dude who yeah. knows who knows if jason signs another contract if there's no team fried you know keeping like really keeping him in racing you know like he could have retired last year yeah. i'm sure um oh yeah but yeah, i mean obviously yeah. the dude can still win and, and wants to still win but it's like he's got something very real in the sport that that's probably going to be harder to walk away from like it's probably going to be harder to walk away from uh like knowing you've got like this whole team fried movement and being at the races and stuff than than just the racing itself if that makes sense yeah yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think it's kind of a uh, unique um, cuz all three of us to be honest, mm. like I'm definitely the most outgoing person in the in our crew between Jason Matt and I. Um, but yeah, Jason and Matt, they don't really want to like they don't really want to put themselves out there. So, it is kind of weird how we were able to like build this thing and I think at the same time, it kind of brought all of us out of our comfort zone. Mm. and um all of us appreciate the, uh, all of this a lot more too um i mean i'm i can only speak for myself but i feel like you know um even for jason he's been fucking racing his whole life um yeah. let alone like the whole florida thing he was living there fuck i don't even know he rode like aldens for like seven years you know just the same shit same shit same shit which is cool makes you a great rider and stuff but i think you know us getting together and and just having fun with it made him kind of, you know, uh, what's the word? Um, yeah, just kind of like realize it, you know, just take it, um, just have fun with it. Fuck, I don't yeah. know. It's just, it's pretty much it. Like he's obviously, and this is the thing too, like Jason is a very, uh, he's, he's a very chill guy, very laid back. Um, but that motherfucker means business though. Like when it's mm. time to ride or any of that stuff, it's fucking, it's go time. You know what I mean? And a lot of his like, and he's on his own schedule too. Like for his shit, like boom, we're up at seven. We're going to do this, this and this, get ready for that, you know? And, um, and yeah, I don't know. It's just, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Very, did, he's very, um, analytical. He, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a super cool guy and a very unique dude in the sport like that he there's not there's not there's mm -hmm. none of him like there's no there's one jason anderson you know <laughs> there's a there's a lot of guys that yeah. similar personality traits similar style similar mindset similar 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 there isn't anyone that's like him yeah he's such a unique no. dude um and I, I can't wait till we do like one of these one day like a full three hour one because i've known him a real long time but I don't know why he is the way he is. Uh, but, yeah. you yeah. know, he's a very fucking unique dude. And you mentioned before about the uh, <laughs> the, the rental car deal. That motherfucker's going to die rich. Yeah. Because he is so tight. Yeah, dude. Like, <laughs> this guy. And tight. that's the crazy thing. Dude, he, uh, he like, um, he yeah, he, he's always trying to save a penny. But, dude, anytime there's an opportunity to make money, oh, 
lights like his eyes fucking blow up you know what i mean like <laughs> it's crazy and then on top of that dude like he's yeah he's extremely smart financially he's extremely um analytical and smart on a dirt bike like he's yeah. got extreme amount of talent but he knows what the fuck's going on on that dirt bike it's not just like oh it's too stiff it's too soft like he knows like boom we need to do this and that and this and that and uh that and at the same time it's crazy because there's that huge professionalism side but then he keeps it real. Like, mm. I think the biggest thing um, with Jason, we were able to get along is because he kind of made, he kind of felt, felt like one of my friends back home growing up in New Jersey. Cause I'm an East coast kid. I didn't grow mm. up in Cali and all this shit. I, Cali's cool and all, but I'm fucking East coast at heart. <laughs> and um, I felt like Jason was kind of just a unique and just kind of kept it real. I've always, I've, I'm friends with a lot of people. Like the first person I truly met in the sport as a rider was Cooper Webb. Yeah. And I was able to live with him for a little bit before that. Always got along super well, still do. But like once I met Jason um, and with Matt too, fuck, we just all had like, you know, the similar mm. interests. And then at the same time, like, I feel like with a bunch of other people in the sport, uh, I'm fr I feel like I don't have enemies, but I'm friends with everybody. And it's most of the time we're usually talking about moto and shit like that. But like with us, it's dude, like fucking, we obviously love watching moto and we talk about it, but there's so much more into it. Like, I think maybe at first when we first got together, we all were like, uh, I don't know, got to like, you know, figure each other out. Like, you know, see, uh, fuck, I don't even know what I'm trying to say right now, honestly. But yeah, like we, we all like gelled well and like figured out we all had same interests, kept it real. But dude, as, as much as like of a real guy, uh, Jason is, as everyone says, you know what I mean? Like, um, he has like interest in everything else. That fucker loves dirt bikes, bro. Like, bro, he watched so much Moto Vision in the house, like 90s, 80s races, just everything. Like, it's, you know. Um, but we also understand there's different uh, other stuff life. outside of it as well. And we appreciate that as well. And I think we all together um, try to take that um, appreciation of outside of moto and inspiration from different cultures, including skateboarding or basketball or fucking whatever it is, yeah. and kind of bring that into moto as well. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely, and I think that that's the vibe that comes across. When, when was the first time that you guys like met and and worked together? Uh, so first time, uh, this was 2016, um, and I just got to California, uh, and this was just verb moto stuff. So I was just kind of um, just doing like my schedule shit. You know, they're like, hey, this day you're gonna go film this guy, this guy. And then I had a day where I had to go shoot Jason. So I went to film him, made him uh, like a verb select edit or whatever. But actually that day never really, I don't, I mean, I don't remember, but never really. And to be honest, what's crazy, I was never really like, like I grew up and Jason was already a pro when I was still a fan. And I was like, ah, oh, yeah, guy's cool or whatever. But yeah. never really, you know, uh, yo, fucking dude, that's Jason Anderson. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. Jason, but that's how it was. And uh, yeah, that first shoot just did a video and I was like, yo, this guy's cool or whatever, but didn't get to talk to him or whatever. And then I believe uh, this must have been 2016 or 17, 17 probably. Um, I was going out to Florida for a shoot with um, the Verb Boys at the time still. And um yeah, it was, it was weird. We got there a little early and like two weeks early before I think Minios or some shit like that. And uh, Campo was like, Hey, well you guys can stay at my buddy's house, Jason, like he'll welcome you guys with open arms. And then that's like when we really like first met and kind of like <laughs> never left. Yeah, dude. It's so cool that there yeah. can be like those, uh, you can find like those real genuine friends through it because there is a lot of yeah there is a lot of just like industry friendships that you have and people that'll you know yeah. like you stay with them and it's like a means to an end and it's not like that's not in like a negative way but it's just like you kind of got a job to do yeah. your homies you hang everyone's cool but you know you don't end up with like a lifelong friendship you know like what you and jason and, yeah. and matt have it's like and you know benny like you end up kind of being around some guys yeah. where you have like these lifelong 
friendships with them. I mean, I'm like that with Wes. I'm like that with Jeremy. Like I've got guys over there where it's like, yeah, re- they're really my fucking boys. Um, and it's cool when yeah. you can, you know, find those people and then you can kind of like be in business with them and you can actually like start to build something. Yeah, definitely. And, um, yeah, that's the thing too. It's like, uh, on top of that, um, obviously I'm like really, we're all really good friends and I'm, I make filmer money. You know what I mean? I'm not making a fuck ton, but at the same time, I'm not there like, yo, I'm able to live with Jason Anderson. He's making fucking, you know, X amount of money racing and getting sponsored. I'm not there like, fuck man. Like, you know, hopefully he can pay for this and that. Like, yeah, it's really yeah. not like that. It's more like, Hey, <laughs> I'm here. You, you, I'm here. I, I have this opportunity to be here. Let me take care of my own. But at the same time, like, I got your back too. Like fucking money and all that bullshit aside, like bro, like, you know, if even if like had to square up, like I'll fucking, I would, I would probably throw hands, you know, like for that select amount of group, you know, I really would. I'm I'm not a fighter. I really, I'm, I'm really not. But if it came down to it, like for a situation like that, like Jason, Matt, Benny, like that crew right there, like that's, that's the squad. You know what I mean? I I bet, I bet that'd be some, like some real, French fucking savagery, they like some Napoleon shit that comes out. <laughs> Fuck no, dude. dude. Oh, bro, I'm so bad. I'm not a fighter. And honestly, so I wanted to, uh, I wanted to kind of take on jujitsu for a bit. Uh, when I was in Florida, there was a one right down the road, and I was like, dude, and not even just for the fighting, but more so of just, um, being disciplined, you know what I mean? Yeah. Mentally and like just like all like discipline. That was what it was for. Um, yeah, it was funny, but the, I want, I wanted to do that and I'm, I haven't done it. I'm fucking, I'm dude, you should fucked off. I probably should have done it. I know. You should 100%. You know why? It's the fucking best sport in the world when you travel. Every gym. Yeah. So like, yeah, if, cause if you, you can go, yeah, you go anywhere, dude. And like, it's free. Like no one, you will, it would be very, 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 very rare for you. Like, let's say you went to Italy and you found a jiu-jitsu gym yep. in, in Milan or something like that, they would not charge you. Like, you just walk in, go session, really? say, no, nah, there's no way. So it'd be so fucking rare. That's, like, one of the things that I love about yeah. it, man. Like, I've been to gyms all over now because, yeah, you just walk in, you, like, go on. Most gyms have an Instagram, and you just go on their Instagram, and then you see what time their yeah, class yeah, is. Right. And, like, you don't have to – you just take, like, a rashi and, and some – like training shorts and you're fucking dialed but you definitely should do it man I, i'd be down to help you try and get into it like pick a cool gym or something if you know somewhere where i know someone yeah. and there's uh there's actually whenever you're in new jersey That'd be crazy dude actually whenever you're in new jersey there's these guys i went on their podcast a couple months ago um and brian the one of the guys that hosts it he has an academy in new jersey and he's a full moto dude he used to race back in the day Brian, Brian who? Oh, fuck, I forget his last name. I'll figure it out for you. Uh, but he's uh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's yeah a, send it to me though. Yeah, yeah, he's a black belt and like, dude, that'd be pretty sick. And if you just went in, got like a few private lessons before you went and did a class, like, I could see you getting into it. He's smart too, you know, smart people do good at <laughs> dude. too. Uh, well, it'd be crazy too. Uh, like Jason, whenever he goes back to Albuquerque, I'll just go train those gyms over there with the gnarliest fuckers because they all train in Albuquerque, I feel like, right? Yeah, dude, they in do el- for elevation. sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get my ass kicked out there. <laughs> it's fucking, yeah, it's good for you. But then when it comes time to throw hands, you know? <laughs> yeah, th- exactly. That's what I was saying. Like, dude, I've, I've never fought a day in my life. I think I went, I did like fuck around like, uh, backyard boxing with my friends, <laughs> dude. <laughs> this shit is terrible, bro. I'm throwing like the worst haymakers, fucking just looking, just bad, really bad. I'm a lover. I'm not a fighter. I just like to chill, you know. That shit is fucking funny. Yeah, no, I mean, it it, it definitely is cool though that that you guys kind of um have that relationship and um and yeah, I mean, Ando is he's a you are right like he's a no bullshit kind of dude like he's just not gonna i don't think he's really cares to like put on a face around people either you know like just yeah it's pretty well yeah. like take it or fucking leave it you know but I, I like that in a dude yeah 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 definitely and dude he yeah he's um 
Yeah, he's a he's a good dude, man. That fucker loves to eat, though. God damn. That's the one thing, man. See, like, I need to train because that guy is burning so many calories at the track. He <laughs> yeah. get, get, leaves the track. He's like, all right, dude, let's go eat, like, two giant burritos at Chipotle. And I'm like, all right, cool. But I didn't do fuck all. <laughs> I just filmed. <laughs> I'm about to, like, eat the same. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, dude, he, he, loves, he loves food. And, um, honestly... Uh, like I'm French, so I grew up in French parents and everything. And dude, French people do not eat anything spicy at all. And meeting Jason, I kind of had to, you know, sack up and start eating a little bit of spicy stuff and started liking it. Opened up some new uh, taste bud avenues or whatever they call right. it. You can't be mad at that. <laughs> I will say New Mexico is, dude, <laughs> the shit's wild. Where he comes from, they put like green and red chili on mm. everything like burritos and everything new mexico i think is the only place i've ever been to where at 7 30 in the morning for breakfast they asked if i wanted chips and salsa <laughs> <laughs> oh that's so i was sick. like what the fuck <laughs> so is, and he is, was like yeah fuck yeah <laughs> is his like family full like mexican background or yeah, like New Mexican. So um, I don't know exactly the whole background, but yeah, they're they're all from over there. And I mean, I'll let him explain his yeah, story. Yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah, they're they're like full like New Mexico. The whole family has been like working on the railroad for past generations. Like you know, they're fucking like he's one of a kind to come out of there. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, like they grew up like in New Mexico. Where he showed me his. Um, his house that he grew up in in Edgewood when we were there, um, I think it was two years ago or last year when he went to New Mexico to prep for Salt Lake. I yeah. got to kind of uh, see it all. And um, dude, it's crazy to see where he, he came from, especially for me because I'm New Jersey and like pretty yeah, urban, so suburban. Yeah. And he's just in New Mexico. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah, but at the same time, uh, traveling the U.S., Dude, New Mexico and New Jersey kind of has some similarities um, in the people almost. Like, people mm. keep it fucking real. But New Mexicans, I will say, are probably some of the toughest mofos out there, dude. Those guys, bro, they're working, like, blue-collar jobs all day long, and they're just drinking, pounding beers, and they just fucking, they're just gritty. They're super <laughs> gritty up there. That's so gnarly. It's wild. <laughs> Uh, so the, the business side is something, um, that's like pretty interesting with the whole team fried thing. Like you mentioned it before, the fact that you guys, um, use all like copyright music. So there's like a bunch of money that you're giving mm. away essentially, um, for like the art yeah. sake, which I think is super fucking cool. Yeah. Um, and there's a pretty big commitment there on your end. And it's like, I mean, dude, some of the song choices this year, have just been impeccable to go from limp biscuit <laughs> to in excess at unadilla <laughs> was like that's why i fucking i uh i i've yeah. sent that video to ricardo because he's like a big music dude and i'm just like yeah. bro yeah, enjoy yeah. just fucking enjoy yeah. headphones on dude, just and, enjoy and i feel like uh i don't know i've was okay so before all of this i was heavily influenced and i probably was known as like the rap instead of guy you know what i mean yes I kept you were just putting fucking meek mill all that <laughs> yeah, shit you, you know were. what i mean and, you were the uh, trap lord and that's that, but that's also yeah dude and but at well. the same time that was <laughs> but bro shout out jersey right there that's yeah. that's the shit i was inspired in growing up in you know i, I was like I was in a pretty diverse high school, public high school growing up. And, uh, there wasn't that many like, like white kids or anything. I was kind of called like white boy growing up, you know? So I kind of like grew up and got influenced by a, a lot of, a lot of that. Um, and that culture, not in a bad way, obviously, I think in a really good way, which gives me almost a different perspective to uh, yeah. different people, um, in, in the industry that shoot moto. Um, so that was like my big thing. And then I just got way over the rap music because it was just everywhere. And um, I always listen to different music, probably more like classic rock and indie-ish music a little bit um, on my own time. And then like once like hanging out with Jason and Matt, once we all got together, um, those two listened to like insane amount of good music. And I kind of like got, um, yeah, influenced by them with that. For sure. 
it's and crazy. I tried to just kind of this summer just just sorry sorry no um, no this summer I was just trying to change it up a little bit you know just be a little different and everything was freestyled though that's the one thing like I don't really most of those videos I'm like all right let's just capture what the fuck happens and let's see what kind of a vibe would be like and then usually when I'm making those videos I'm deciding the song day of kind of mm. <laughs> the video I'm like oh fuck damn this would be kind of sick oh let's go let's go work on this and then next thing you know I'm just balls deep in this edit and then I don't stop until it's over because I hate walking away from uh from like an unfinished video that's pretty cool to know yeah I was gonna talk like ask you a little bit about the like processes and stuff um of like yeah. how how you do it um it's funny how music can bond friends like really really good music yeah like I have music buddies that, you know, I'll like, we'll just be sending each other music back and forward all the time. And there's such a crazy connection that you can have through music. And I don't know if you ever met Jay Reinenberg when, um, like through JDR, like when he was over there. But, um, I mean, there's like this one, he's the guy that owned the JDR team. And so me and him, oh, okay, okay. like I lived, I lived with him, um, when I was doing the JDR thing over there. And there was like one day, like where I found my old iPod randomly, like my old sixty gig, like OG iPod, and um, yep. and I went through it and I was like scrolling through, and then I found Lincoln Park, and I just played. Um, oh fuck, dude! I just <laughs> fucking played Meteora from the top one day, and we were driving yeah. the Big Bear, Some good and shit. Uh, and we like we we kind of had like we knew we had like this common music interest. But just dude that fucking yeah. one song you know you just play maybe it was hot maybe it was hybrid theory and like paper cut comes on and you just like yeah. boys you know you're like wow that's my fucking yeah. guy right there like when it hits yeah. you the same and then from then on dude me and him we've seen lincoln park together probably 16 17 times with like without exaggeration and that's all over the world like we've literally flew to see yeah. you know we saw him in australia we saw him in places in america so it was just like music and like friends with really good music taste can like you can really yeah. like click through that shit yeah yeah dude and and fucking music i mean i will say if i had to make like a list of things i would need in life music would be on there i've been a music head my whole mm. life like i fucking had the walkman i had all that shit i always needed music on the way to school any any time you know and uh yeah it just like kind of uh, brought us all together and and yeah and it's crazy too because with them around it also helps me being like influenced by a different style of music and like maybe sometimes jason's like yo you should put this in an edit and i'll listen to it. i'm like oh yeah that'd be kind of cool like i don't know i also have like a very specific taste personally uh when i have to edit something i'll like know it's the one when i hear it if that makes mm. sense i have to really like dude i'll do a full process of going through music of like my liked playlist everything maybe i get into like a wormhole of uh just a genre that i like and i'll just like listen to it and then i need to listen to it at certain parts to know if it changes and all that shit too because i don't mm. want to fucking I'm like oh damn this sounds good i drag it in and i like start working off of it and then halfway through i'm like oh fuck like what do i do here yeah so um yeah i'm like really really picky with that stuff but um i don't know you also can't make everyone happy too with the videos when i was doing like rap stuff i was like fuck me dude <laughs> but fuck him right yeah i mean that's one of the things that i think makes the videos so good on your end as well is that like for me i'm almost tuning in to hear your selection of music as much as i am to watch the mm. the writing uh and i mean ain't yeah. no love in the heart of the city oh, <laughs> get the fuck out of town you know like there's just been so many which one was that god what video was think. that um i don't think oh it was this fuck season. that's uh you know what that's last that's season. 2020 red yeah. bud um yeah. yeah right before melville bah, bah, with the lil bah, wayne bah, edit fuck it's <laughs> <laughs> so good dude so fun. that's on oh, my th fuck. i will say but now that's like on my like playlist oh, no, that's no. come you know that's come up and that's like got me yeah. deeper into like a, a different genre yeah so, 
there's it's like a yeah, yeah i don't yeah. know it's it's a pretty important thing i think yeah and i'm going down a weird path too like bro this like the hurlings rod stewart edit <laughs> honestly like i've always kind of heard that song it was on the radio growing up and stuff and um I was like, ah, it's cool or whatever. But now, like, I'm almost, like, trying to listen to it differently. Like, Mm. fuck, this would go hard as hell on this shit. Like, it, because, obviously, dude, a sick-ass rap beat with fucking, who knows, Future, whatever, any of those guys. And you put it to Hurling's, like, yeah, that shit's going to look dope. But, like, dude, I don't know. You can use, like, something different, and it'll look really cool. Especially because it makes it easier. Um, It's kind of the same, like skateboard and like some of those guys like they are so good they can wear whatever the fuck they want do an edit mm. to whatever music they want because they just look that good to it it's almost the same as like her like dude hurlings like you could put whatever the fucking music you want under it and it's gonna look sick you know if that mm-hmm. makes sense yeah yeah 100 percent. yeah so and i just I think want like, it to be different and like just yeah and, and you can take like you can take a risk with a guy like Hurlings in an edit because the fucking footage is so good. Like you can't make a shit video. Yeah. Like so it's like you can mm. take a risk and then you take a risk with music and then it just pays off massive. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I think this whole summer was fucking crazy with the music selection. But yeah, I mean that Unadilla edit with like the Limp Biscuit song <laughs> first and then straight into In Excess, it was just <laughs> Duh. it was it was insane like that was that wasn't an edit you know like it was an experience in a way and i mean even like yeah. rufus to soul <clears throat> for the uh for the dino lost files like that was the first yeah. you know opening i mean there's just so much cool shit but i mean this all comes off the back of a decision not to monetize on youtube which is that's a kind of gnarly decision yeah. because that means that now like that uh, that's the money we rely on like we rely on the youtube ad yeah. money and we can't i mean granted it's our own shit and like there's no music underneath this but you know we make writing edits and stuff and they fucking suck because we don't use cool music yeah yeah and like it's crazy because um like we don't make any money other than trying to sell clothes <clears throat> and all of it's kind of <clears throat> excuse me uh all of it's out of pocket straight up Mm. like it's shit's all out of my pocket and jason's not paying for me to be at the races or pay for my flight there was definitely a couple times i'd say a couple years back we were really trying to establish ourselves um we would help like we would work things out and especially like staying at the races like a hotel and stuff i'd be able to stay with jason like that shit would help but it's really all out of our own time and pocket and the only thing we can really bank on is apparel but at the same time personally i really don't give a shit about the money like i would like to make a good living off of this but for me it's it's more so like straight up just giving it back to the sport and like going back to that 250c rider me that's Mm. on the fence line and sees dean wilson that one time a year like that's the that's who i'm doing this shit for if that makes sense Mm mm-hmm and, yeah, and core think, heads dude like i fucking love dirt bikes and that and and it's for it's yeah it's really for those people that will like see it and they really appreciate it and hopefully as well people that have never seen it can look at this and they're like damn this is pretty cool and then as well grow the sport yeah definitely man and and i think that that's why i kind of was curious with like how old you were because i mean for me like i was kind of just trying to like i was on that vibe until i was about 29 and then when shit went down and i had to move back to australia i kind of just like didn't have a choice i didn't have like i wasn't going to be able to go to the race there was like nothing sort of here i had to like make my own shit happen and then the podcast happened essentially but it's like you've got time big time to make bank and i I feel like the people that do end up making like a really good living out of shit like the people like you that grind like fuck for the love and they do it for the culture and there's something that is like really fulfilling to you about this process and about creating and about um you know like the product that that you're trying to make and i feel like whenever there is that like legitimate good intentions mixed with the hard work that you put in that it's it just comes like the money at some point 
um, yeah. will it's like a it's like a long tail you know what i mean and after a while it fucking yeah. it, it yeah. catches up um but yeah i mean it's that's sort of one of my i guess curiosities is like what do you see for yourself as, as like the business side of it going forward and i mean do you see like a roadmap to you in the future of like i want to make these kind of videos i want to do these kind of gigs i want to like do you even want to like enter into that world or like do you, have you thought about like what you want in the future I don't know. yeah <laughs> i to be honest i live like such in the moment that like i really uh, i really just live i don't watch the news i don't really I, I obviously see it on instagram and shit but i really just try and focus on what's going on around me or where i'm gonna go today and this and that <clears throat> so with team pride i really don't know where this is gonna go because it just keeps building and it's just yeah it's wild i would love i would love to make a living off of this if i can do this and only this with team fried um that's that's the end goal for me is being able to build this 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 brand and <clears throat> being able to film and 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 show up to the track and the rider is he knows who you are and he's pumped that you're there to film them like that kind of stuff um that's like what i i i don't know it's that's a that's a good question um but hopefully just to keep building i mean right now i'm just trying to have fun and like i said ride this wave and take advantage of uh the opportunity that i'm in because at the mm. end of the day i'm also easily replaceable too so it, i just have to you know not take it for granted and um i don't know just keep grinding i guess it's it's uh i got really lucky i think too um because i think the toughest part to stay in this is the financial part mm. and like th all those nights of staying at jason's hotel room and like staying at his house in florida where you know all that shit because obviously I couldn't do that on my own. I couldn't just go out from New Jersey out of my own pocket and then just stay in Florida out of my, like pay for my own hotel, yeah. stay there for months to just grind out videos. Like I was able to at least have that opportunity to stay with Jason and then take advantage of that opportunity. But at the same time, still do it out of my pocket just with mm. a little bit of relief, if that makes sense. You know? Yeah. I mean, there's so I'm something, really fortunate with that. Yeah. There's something to be said to like, if you, like let's say you're a person that's like listening to this podcast and you want to be the next fucking tom Janae. it's like okay cool you got to be like super down to be broke for a really long time with like no real <laughs> <Fuck yeah> <laughs> with like no real end in sight i mean i fucking find it so strange that i actually have money that hits my bank account like semi-regularly like that's fucking crazy to me now yeah i mean granted i got a lot of, lot yeah. of like bills and employees and shit now but it's like yeah. at my point it, at like one point in my life like when i was living in america and filming every right like i just didn't know when fucking money was gonna ha like happen like Dude, not even yeah. like make much money and, like just any money uh, i just didn't know when i was gonna get fucking paid next and you get up and you fucking film and then you edit and you're just like i i guess like yeah. surely something will it's happen straight up a gypsy life yep it's a gypsy life dude straight up and on top of that it's like um you don't like for me i don't i don't think about the money maybe i should more mm -hmm. and i don't really think about it until like the one day i decide to look and i'm like fuck dude i need to like you know i need to get some money right now <laughs> yeah. it's like shit like that like for example like dude right now i have i don't have a car right now i would drive my truck from new jersey to california back and forth all the time and um I drove it back, I think before outdoors or during outdoors, I drove it back and it's got like 250,000 miles on it. And I'm like, dude, there's no way it's going to make it back. So I just had to leave it there. Sold it back to my dad, made a little bit of cash off of it. And um, I'm trying to save up money for a car, but fucking it's like <laughs> the money I make goes into the next project that I go to. And then I'm not helping myself when I'm fucking like, oh, damn, $700 flight to fucking Italy. Oh, let's go and do that. But at the end of the day, like I spend that money and then I, I feel like I definitely get a lot in return. Mm. Um, and I hope that in the future, financially, I can get it returned as well, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's funny. Let's like, uh, like, do you think, do you know, you know, like Mr. Beast, like his YouTube videos? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like he famously puts 
every dollar that he makes into essentially like the next month's lot of videos. And I mean, for me, that's been pretty much my entire life is, and this is like a really hard headspace for people to understand, especially like my parents and my brother and like people that are around me. And these days it's like, it's gotten a, a bit better like it's a lot more stable this is just like a this is like a job essentially like i just have a job now whereas before before i was like you like i didn't really have a fucking job and it's like you got your camera and you got the people that you film in and then you just got to figure out a way to like um to like make money off it you know um but it was like i just fully had this headspace that i was just completely invested in to where it was like I'm down. I'm down. I'm down to just spend every dollar that I got into exactly what you said, yeah. like the next project and the next project and the next project and the next yeah. project. And like, I mean, I just fucking bought a red again. And it's like, I lost a red pretty much like when I left America. And like, that was like a big silent yeah. goal was to like get a red again and get back into that game. Like I actually feel yep. like, I want to be creative again in that way. Like I kind of didn't really care for a while. Um, Mm -hmm. but it's like that again is like, I got, I had money and I was like, all right, I need to reinvest like that. Just that mentality of just spend everything you make on your creative outlet, spend it all. (laughs) And like, at some point it's like, uh, so Mr. Beast, to get back to that reference it's like he'll spend fucking if he makes like six million dollars in a month which is like that's you know he's he's making millions a month and then he's like putting it back Uh, in into that into the next month's videos but then at some point and this is i guess like my mentality which i it was pretty cool when i i've been really studying mr beast quite a bit and like listening to a lot of his interviews Mm -hmm. and like just kind of trying to get into his headspace a little bit because i think that I've kind of occupied that same headspace, but on like a much smaller scale. Um, but you know, it's like yep. in my head, I was always like, man, I'll at one point, if I can just like keep going and just every month I get money, I invest it. And then that makes more money and more at some point I can just take a month off and I'll be fine. And maybe I'll be yeah. able to buy it. Like I'll be able to put a house deposit down and maybe, you know, maybe one day I'll be able to, you know take that that month where it's like all right i can actually cash some of this money and actually do some of this shit but you know for now it's like i look around my studio it's like my studio is full like of shit if we need a new fucking pci card so that the hdmi you know inputs to the computer can be better it's like bang there's a thousand dollars it's like we need these fucking microphones bang there's three thousand dollars like just it fucking it's a it's a weird I guess like a, a really counter intuitive or like against the norm way of like living a life. But I feel like, yeah, guys like us, we've just decided that it's okay to be like broke as fuck to like in the name yeah. of like creating the vision that you've got. Fuck yeah. And like, dude, we live like between Matt and I too, bro. We live such a dirtbag lifestyle. Like (laughs) (laughs) obviously I will say, so like I'm, I'm like not making any money off team fried. I'm like doing this right now. I'm really not, I'm not making any money off of this. This is strictly to just keep building and we're making money in team fried, Yeah. but that money's staying there to kind of build so that we can continue doing this. If that makes sense. But everything is out of my own pocket on my end. Luckily, I'm able to do side gigs. Like for this summer, I was doing pro motocross. Right now, I just took on Racer X where I'll supply them social stuff. So that's at least giving me a little bit of a consistent little paycheck to kind of get by. But I mean, essentially, I hopefully one day I can like fucking actually make a living where I have my own place and I don't have to be living <laughs> no offense to Jason and Matt, but we can all have our own place and we don't have to live together and yeah. I can have a car and go do this shit and that, you know, but for right now, I, I, at the same time, I, I feel like it's also important to just focus on this shit that I'm doing. And yeah, and yeah, like every, every race, like this summer I was able to have that budget, like expense traveling and stuff but before that it was like fuck all right let's spend this money on this flight and hopefully you know that money will will make it back in a in a week or two you know but it's just constantly just all right let's try and take and 
take another risk. Yeah, I mean, and it, it's probably crazy for people to hear that you don't make money off Team Fried. It's like, it's probably the most <laughs> culturally relevant thing that we have. Like, I, I think that if we look inside our industry, it's like, to me, you've got, you know, like the thrasher and skateboarding. It's like Team Fried is like, that's like the core if you look inside the sport of like what's our cultural identity right now like what's the wave we're all riding what's the thing that we all watch to fire us up what's the video that we never miss like that to me is team fried so it's like to have such a crazy cultural impact but to just be making no fucking money off it it's like people would probably yeah. be pretty shocked to hear that that's how the shit actually goes down yeah and and i'm not i'm also not trying to like say hey i'm not making oh no definitely i don't think like it comes crying off like about that. it you know what i mean nah, nah. like yeah like it's straight up yeah this is like the passion of this this is like my passion project almost and hopefully you know we can keep building and that one day the you know we can start paying ourselves and then fucking later down the road who knows let's say like 10 years from now this shit's just insane and we fucking mm decide to have to some big company and they're like hey we'll give you like 20 million dollars for this and then fucking next thing you know i'm a millionaire yeah, <laughs> yeah. pretty cool <laughs> but that i guess that's like kind of the but, fucking dream you know like that's kind of the that's kind yeah. of the line of thinking that you've got to have to commit yeah. to it in the way that that you commit to that you know yeah yeah and like dude and going back to the team for like um Dude, there was like a rumor. I don't know how true this big or true or big this rumor was, but apparently like people like when we first started selling t-shirts and this shit's all out of our garage too. Like this is fucking, we don't have fucking, uh, whatever they call it. Fulfillment centers. Yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. We don't have any of that. And there was like, I heard at one point like, oh yeah, I heard like team Fred's making like $50,000 a month off their clothes and I'm like fuck dude I fucking wish bro if that was the case bro I'd fucking have there'd be like three guys out there with fucking zoom cams and everything but that's you know hopefully we'll we'll get there one day but I'm not like stressing about like the the money side as long as I can keep doing this mm. and keep filming 14 pride and have my own creative freedom to show like my view of it um that's all that really matters honestly like I, I'm I'm figuring out right now with next year what um I can and can't do for Supercross, but I would love to be able to do the same exact thing um, or t team down. I'd love to bring Team Fight to Supercross. I really would. Mm. Like I think it, I think it'd be awesome. Um, so we'll see. But um, either or, like, and I already made this <laughs> plan. If uh, I really, dude, I have no idea. Maybe I should probably be more on top of it with figuring out what my deal is with Supercross. But um. If I can't go there, dude, I'm not kidding. I've already told Jason and Matt this. I'll fucking pay out of my own pocket and I'll go to Europe and film GPs before outdoors and just do I that would, shit. I would love that. I'd also love Team Fried <laughs> Supercross, but I definitely love uh, Tom <laughs> uh Euro Edition. Yeah, dude. I I was I already had like the whole game plan. Like I'd go fucking stay with Jed for like a month. Then oh. I'd go down to Italy, stay with Guadagnini, just like kind of swap around, hop on different couches. I mean, that's how it is, anyways. I'm out. I live out of my suitcase. Like, bro, I literally have, <laughs> I have my backpack with my laptop, um, camera, and a change of clothes to go film tomorrow at El Snort because I'm gonna go to Grindstone after this. I'm gonna film oh. Walshy tomorrow, actually. Oh no, shit! That dude's a psycho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he is. Straight up fucking psycho. I actually want... But um Straight up I, gypsy life, you know? Yeah, man. Well, that's where the name of this show came from because that's all... And that's <laughs> what people called me. They were just like, oh, fucking gypsy, man. Like, that's just what he does. Like, from when I was 19, you were just on a couch and going wherever the fuck. And like, dude, it was crazy even, you know, when I was doing all that stuff. We didn't even really have internet. Like, there's people that... I, like, completely fucked their internet so bad. Like, people... I left people's houses, and then a, a few weeks later, I'd get friends call me being like, dude, there's a fucking $900 internet bill for your fucking uploading yeah. these videos when you stayed here. Like, it was as gypsy spec as it got back yeah, in the day. dude. Australia's weird for that shit, bro. I didn't know about that. Because, like, here, it's kind of unlimited, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And the first time I went to fucking... When I went to Sydney with Shirk, 
we stayed in an Airbnb and like the first night, dude, we were like so jet lagged. We left, uh, we were just watching The Office on Netflix and we left that TV running, dude. Oh. <laughs> the Airbnb lady within like one day called us up and was like, Hey, like, don't, like, what are you guys doing with the internet? She's like, you know, I got to pay for this. It's on yeah. a plane. We're like, oh, fuck. Yeah, we're like, oh, <laughs> fuck. Yeah, we left it running. Like, just, it, it was, yeah, not good. We didn't leave it running when we left, but I'm saying, like, we yeah, you know, like watched it all night, yeah. fell asleep, and yeah. That's yeah, fucking Just streaming funny. shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I'm, like, pretty keen to do this uh this langston right across south africa thing i don't know if you listen to the podcast with him but we kind of talked about um that we wanted to do this trip and i've actually been texting with him back and forth a little bit about like potential dates so if we do it november next year i'll fly you to come and do like the trip across Fuck, south dude. africa I'd, dude i'd love to go to south i'd love to go there they have nando's there too i think that's where it originates from actually really I think, don't quote me on that, but I'm almost pretty sure it comes from South Africa. Dude, how good is Nando's? Oh, fuck, dude. They only have it in uh, two places in the U.S. So there's two rounds a year we can go get it. Uh, one is in Chicago. They have like a select few. So for Red Bud, you fly into Chicago, grab Nando's. And then Bud's Creek, the whole state of Maryland, I guess it's like kind of like known for their chicken or whatever. There's a bunch of uh, Nando's around um, around Maryland and Washington D.C. It's so weird, and you can't franchise them. Like, dude, Jason's wanted to franchise one in L.A. forever because he'd make a killing off of it. Dude, right? I was that was literally my next question. Is like, why the fuck does Jason yeah. not franchise one of those? Yeah. things? like he would be rich. Uh, dude, that that fucker stays up all night. He looks up all that shit. Doesn't matter. Nando's, Chick Fil A, he bro. He's always looking up like what, what, how much, what can I do with my money and make it, make it grow. <laughs> yeah. That was like, that was one time we were, we we're at dinner and it was like, he just, I don't know if I've told this story on the podcast, but he just had moved in. Like, I think he just got the Claremont house and, uh, or like he'd been in there like a few months and then he didn't even bother getting a TV stand. He just put the TV on yeah. the box that the tv came yeah. in and then and folding we were, chairs <laughs> yeah we were, we were talking about some <laughs> shit like he fully he fully just laid out like his i don't he would have been maybe 21 he fully laid out like his entire <laughs> retirement plan with like his income and like his uh, it was fucking crazy though because he literally said he's like i'm definitely winning at least one 450 championship and that money is gonna like set me up and i'm gonna do this with this money like he hadn't won shit at this point but he was so fucking dialed on like exactly what he was gonna do the exact money that he was gonna yeah, spend dude. the money that he was gonna save like he is a switched on dude yeah yeah dude that's that's wild and dude <laughs> It's funny because, like, I guess uh, it's true what they said. I don't know what the quote is exactly, but um, rich people live like they're poor. And mm -hmm. it's fucking damn facts because, <laughs> bro, I make, like, one little check. I'm like, fuck, yeah, let's go spend it all. And, like, for him, like, he's making probably millions of dollars. And, like, when he moved to the Florida house, dude, he doesn't even have a fridge. Like, Rockstar will send, like, the little fridges for their <laughs> energy drinks. Uh, we'll just use that as the fridge. <laughs> like, fuck, free fridge. <laughs> we got oh, monster dude. fridges now too so we've been using those bad boys <laughs> <laughs> oh dude you got, yeah you gotta love it but like i mean he's got to figure it figured out like you don't really need all the all the shit yeah. i think dunge still no, has the first yeah. truck that he bought when dunge did his first contract he still has like he bought a truck and he still has that truck wow yeah yeah, it's crazy. He's done different things. Like, I know, uh, I mean, I'm not going to, like, fucking blow his whole thing out. But I know he had, like, dude, he had a bunch of different houses and shit like that. I don't know. Anyways, yeah, he's uh, yeah, he's a uh, smart man. And I'm glad to have him in my corner or be yeah. in his corner. <laughs> yeah, no, he's a G for, for sure. Yeah, the, uh, the South Africa trip, though, like, I definitely... I definitely would want yeah, to get yeah. you out and then it'd just be like so I'm, I'm trying to do I'm trying to do like a cool like I don't know almost like a show almost um like I want to do something like kind of new in moto in that way of mm -hmm. like in terms of content just something like completely different um and I think that 
yeah the gl thing like riding like i want to get essentially it's like get adventure bikes like land at whatever the fuck airport at one end of the country and then have some adventure bikes waiting there and then you like land on the airport and then you just put your adventure bike gear on and then you just ride and then there's a there's like a a (laughs) camera car support vehicle and then a trailer with dirt bikes and then essentially you just like ride the adventure bike to the dirt bike track and then you just like stay there and then you ride dirt bikes and then you get on and then you ride again but like imagine the visuals dude of like riding through fucking like cape town and you're on these adventure bikes and then you know riding through like game parks and then meeting all the cool people along the way and that's one of the dope things about the whole gypsy tales thing is like there's people from all over the world that will message me and say like we love the show we listen to the show like so many people listen here like imagine if you could come and like imagine us just like going and riding an adventure bike to a fucking local south african club day and just like yeah. me, yeah. Sam, and Grant Langston doing a club day, you know? Yeah, dude, it'd be crazy. And that's the thing too, like like people all over the world, yeah, they fucking, it's wild. Like I have people from, when I went to Italy, dude, the different countries, and I'm sure, um, I'm sure there's South African following too. I mean, I filmed actually a couple of kids um, from South Africa and they're all um, really cool. That'd be rad though. Yeah, uh, fun fact actually while i have this on my mind um our biggest statistic following other than the u.s um is australia with Team really Pride. yeah like 40 percent right. or something like it's wow. huge it's That's fucking insane. huge and like my personal page is like all my top cities other than even like the u.s um australia is first Wow. So like when I make these videos, to be honest, I kind of think of like the, the Aussies. I'm like, Fuck, let's, <laughs> let's give the Aussies a little chats for this one or something, you know? <laughs> Dude. Yeah. We should fully go through some like epic Aussie songs, like stuff that's not cliche, oh, but it's like l- yeah. every Aussie would actually know what, what that song is, but it's not like a fucking outcome. Ah, yeah. Brother, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't know. I, I obviously like I um I've been discovering music and I kind of figure I found out about the chats. Like I, honestly, sound I mean, I sound like a poser, but I think I found out like a little earlier this year when I was like scrolling on a playlist and I was like, fuck, this is good, and um kind of understanding a little bit of this, the slang and having Benny too with yeah. Benny around, dude. He's fucking telling me what Smoko is all about, shit. And I'm like, yeah. fuck yeah, this is rad, <laughs> <laughs> dude. How good Smoko. Oh, oh yeah. Fucking, I'm on Soko. Fuck, Leave I need to be a Soko right now, mate. Stop saying. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, fuck it. It's, almost, it's actually almost Smoko for us. Yeah. Um. So, we, we should do some bench rate. We've almost, uh, we've almost done, oh no. How long have we been going for, Griff? Two and a half. Fucking hell. The shit went fuck. quick. <laughs> shit went quick. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> uh, we should do hey, this is going to be good for a couple people that are on a on a long drive, too. That's all I listen to now on Road Trips is podcasts. Mm. I can't do the music. What What are you listening to podcast-wise? <sighs> Honestly, I do, I do listen to yours. I listen to yours. Um, I'm pretty fucking basic. I listen to... Joe Rogan, um, hot boxing with Mike Tyson. I think those yeah. are pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, and that's kind of, that's kind of it. Like those are the three. I'm not, I don't really branch out too much. Um, just cause like I've listened to other people. I'm like, ah, this shit's just like, ah. I, you have, I have my categories of what I would want to listen to and boom, that's it. Yeah. Dude, but I, no bullshit, dude. I can show you my Spotify. Like I got you on there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you've sent me a couple messages from some episodes. <laughs> uh it's fun yeah no it's good especially on long road trips it's awesome yeah it's funny though i like to to put these out like i actually i put them out obviously so people will listen to them but i have like zero expectation that anyone would actually want to listen to this shit fully yeah but people do it's crazy bro it's fucking wild and same thing with like filming too like the vlogging ourselves i'm like dude there's no baby would watch this shit and people fucking watch it it's it's crazy and like even um uh this weekend so i was um at day in the dirt <clears throat> and i was with my buddies uh deegan von losberg trevor stewart all of them and deegan's brother he's like he preps all of deegan's bikes with his dad and he's a huge motohead and he fucking straight up listens to 
every podcast in moto. Like I guarantee you, Ryan, you're listening to this shit right now. Like he <laughs> listens to all of it every and straight through too. like, bro, I, I, I mean, I can only have a certain amount of hours or time when I am able to listen to some of these. Mm. It's wild. That's crazy, but it's dope, man. It's, it's cool. And it's, um, it's a nice little avenue that's created for a lot of us. Yeah. And I, I think that, um, one of the things that I said pretty early on is that just like people don't really want to like dip out a moto, like, you know you've got your every day and you've got your stuff that you know some most people are going to commute to work and it's like what are you gonna listen to you want to just like if you're a moto head then like you want to listen to moto and then if you've got like yeah like dude for me like i'm watching team fried at lunch that's what i'm i'm going on and if there's a new video i'm waiting i'm always watching moto yeah yeah and it's so you know to think about like it is funny i'm like i don't really expect anyone to listen to this but it's like, there's a lot of people that just don't want to leave Moto. And there's a lot of people that fucking love your work. Yeah. So they're like, oh, wow, Tom Janae is coming on Gypsy Tales. Like, bang, definitely listening to that. But, and then yeah. the weird thing as well is that, A, people want to listen. But then once you start getting so many people listening, you kind of almost just like lose touch of what, like, it's really hard to even put a mental, uh, like wrap your head yeah. mentally around like how many people that it's actually overwhelming. is it's fucking bizarre it's overwhelming as fuck like dude even like the, the at the podium like i said like <laughs> there's a lot of people that i probably have messaged back on instagram but i'm mm. really bad with names or faces and stuff and like fucking in the crowd they're yelling out my name and shit and i'm like dude like what the fuck like tomax on the podium fucking yell out et3 like what the hell are you guys <laughs> yeah. screaming team fried for but it's cool you know at the same time it's super cool but it's extremely overwhelming at the same time and i'm trying to get better at that because um i do think i have like a good personality to kind of interact with fans and like Mm. also maybe film myself and stuff so i want to i want to be able to take advantage of that it's just yeah it's overwhelming like i remember um this year at southwick um to get onto the track have you ever been to southwick that's the one place there's like two tracks i haven't been and that's one of them okay so it's uh it's pretty compact and the pits are on top of this hill so from the pits you have to go down the steep hill um Mm. to go to the starting line and there's a bike path for bikes only and then if you're like crew or whatever you have to go through the crowd so you leave the pits and you're like entering the fucking the dome basically and I walk right down into it and like fucking, you know, a couple people in team pride and I'm like filming them and it's awesome because it's exactly what I want and want to be able to film. But at the same time, it's like, dude, what the fuck? This is crazy. This is it's wild. And then and like- I try to, I try to film everybody too. And sometimes I feel like I leave people out and I'm like, I put that like stress on myself. Like, fuck man, I don't want to let that person down, you know? Well, the, you said something earlier that's like a, the probably my biggest uh thing that i'm like the most self-conscious about when it comes to people like talking to you and knowing you um i'm like pretty lucky in the sense that i'm really far away from like where the most like the most people that watch this show and like uh would know who i am I'm nowhere near those people. Yeah. Like I just live in fucking Burley on the Gold Coast. Like I, yeah. I, I can yeah. one yeah. tank, one tank of fuel lasts me legitimately a month unless I go ride. And uh, so it's like I'm just not yeah. anywhere. No one really knows who the, who the fuck I am. So it's like I'm pretty lucky in that sense. But the thing that fucking sucks, and it's the worst part of any form of like notoriety, is when someone comes up to you. And they're talking to you and you're meeting them and you're having this face-to-face interaction but you've been dming them on instagram for fucking ever because they're replying to stuff <laughs> and then you don't yeah, they, yeah, yeah. like yeah you just don't know don't know that to, just, that's who that person is that is the yeah. fucking worst feeling so if i've ever done that to yeah. you and you're listening like uh, it, it actually happened to me a couple weeks ago and i was fucking devastated like i got back in the car yeah. and then the, the dude messaged me and then was like dude it was so good me i was like fuck i wish i fucking knew because yeah. like yeah. you remember the interactions yeah. it's not like 
It's not like yes. you don't actually care when you're talking to people. Like I know that person, but it's like I know that yeah. Instagram person. I don't know them in real life. So I spent this whole day riding with this dude that I thought I was meeting him for the first time. So that's like, that's the fucking thing that I'm so self-conscious about yeah. in this whole thing. It's weird too. I'm, I'm in the same boat as well. Cause I've had that plenty of times. And at the end of the day, I've tried to like, I've, for me, I want to keep it fucking real. You know what Same, I mean? Dude. I'm not fucking cooler than you or whatever. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like, yeah, I'm able to film, but like, I'm not fucking better than you or anything. And, uh, yeah, it's crazy. There's a, there's actually, there are star, certain fans now that I am able to pick out, um, mm. over the last two years, like at red, I, I, sorry, I don't know your name, but I, I've seen the kid before. I'm like, yo, what's up? Like, you know, just that kind of stuff. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's crazy. And then there's like, there's people I'm always talking to. I, I try to be for the most part, like 90% pretty good at replying to everybody. Mm. Um, it just sometimes it gets fucking a little overwhelming and it's always a lot of the same like camera question and stuff. So there's days I'm like, Oh yeah, I'll tell this person. Then there's some days I'm like, fuck off. <laughs> and not in a bad way. It's just like, you just don't have you know what I mean? Like, for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 And that's the thing too. I, I, uh, uh, I'm like, I'm very high energy or extremely low energy like I'm yeah like really excited ready to fucking talk to anybody or i'm just like bro like fucking leave me alone please right now <laughs> yeah yeah i feel like i probably there's no have, good in between it sucks yeah i feel like i probably have a little bit of that i probably would have said that pre-covid that i was just like a full-on extrovert and then covid happened and i live by myself fully for the first time in my life in like my own place and it was just like my own zone everything was on me like literally every decision i made like the whole deal just me in like this little bubble and i'm just like it's kind of fucking nice like i'm not gonna lie I just yeah kind of, right i don't know that i like really care to be fucking smiling and out and happy and talking to people like this is kind of cool yeah no i love it both i love dude i love being at the races around people I love being around people, but I also love fucking being on my own in my room, fucking low cooked and playing fucking video games, you know, <laughs> me time. <laughs> uh, so you know, uh, I'm human at the end of the day too. Yeah. I'm fucking still typing pornhub.com jizz in a tissue when I'm by myself. Don't you worry. <laughs> uh, amen to that brother. Amen. <laughs> No shame in the game. That's the realest <laughs> quote to come out of this fucking podcast. <laughs> uh, fuck. But dude, what the fuck? I mean, shit's fucked now because of OnlyFans too. Like, dude, I'm it's, not gonna it's lie. It's gnarly too, you know. OnlyFans kind of gets me sometimes. <laughs> I just feel like, I feel like I want to support, me too. <laughs> dude. Right? Like, I watch the chick fuck for like for free, right? And then I'm like official website and i click out of official yeah. website and i'm fucking on her fucking only fans and it's like i got 12 bucks dude yeah i got 12 bucks for you like you're a creator who fucking a, does it right i'm a creator you're a creator i respect the game yeah here it is there's some cash dude i fucking i wish i was able to make an only fans that'd be tight but dude. i just don't you know I don't have the body physique for it, so don't have the mate. I'm uh, just <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we're we're I got stage fright too with that shit, so I don't know. But um, yeah, no shame in the game though. We're we're content creators at the end of the day, so if uh, you support me, I I support you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I fucking love it. But I can supply content too, dude. I only know how to shoot dirt bikes, so. Yeah, I feel like you could shoot porn. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait, I had, I had some legitimate thoughts of when I was living in like Beverly. Well, I don't want to say Beverly Hills pretty loosely. I was like across so, LA, I was like, though. Like, yeah, I was like in, I was in Beverly Hills technically, but I was in like West Hollywood. Yeah. And uh, dude, I was like going to parties with fucking porn stars and like. I was like in that scene oh. for a minute and I was like, I could fucking shoot porn. Like I could definitely oh, do this, but I still kind of, I still kind of care. Good. Dude, I bet it does. Like even just being a fucking stunt Fuck. cock for a chick, you know, like that has her only fans and you just yeah. like, you never show nothing, but like, she's just like using your shit. And it's then you're cleaner. the dude, you're it's the dude filming. shorter. Yep. 
Yeah, it's it's cleaner, it's shorter. The fucking day rate is probably God knows a lot more. And you fucking get home and you're not shot as fuck from filming an outdoor national all day in 90 degree weather. I wonder though. <laughs> Don't I worry wonder, though, I still love dirt bikes. <laughs> yeah. I wonder though like if it would like fuck up your perspective if you just saw pussy all day. Oh, yeah. oh, dude, honestly, imagine the confidence on picking up chicks after that shit, That's though. true, Because it's so numb to you. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, fuck it. Like, okay, if I smash, whatever. But, like, let me see if I can pull. That's probably, like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm talking out of my complete ass, by the way. I had the worst <laughs> game yeah. ever. But uh, it's funny. Actually, so I've I've been in West Hollywood before. Um, and, uh, like, Jason has a house there that he... It's, like, an investment purpose. And uh, when I was there, I set, dude, I fucking set my Tinder straight up in the hills. I'm like, bro, let's let's cash out real quick. Let's see if I can, you know, make something happen. And we're we're here right now, so we didn't. Ah, uh, nothing happened. <laughs> we didn't make it happen. Who's got the most? Who's got the most game that like you're around? Um, Ando has game. Well, both but of I don't the boys are, are, are uh, yeah, they're lot. both taken. Yeah, they're, yeah, I thought he yeah, had yeah, they're both taken. I'm the only single guy, <laughs> and I probably had the least amount of game. <laughs> <laughs> who's, Jason who's is very, uh, he's very, uh, he doesn't give a fuck. Like he doesn't yeah. care. He doesn't like approaching a girl in the bar is like, yeah, whatever. Like just another person. Matt's really good at um, talking to girls. Like he's always attentive and always ready to give their attention. And I'm kind of. <laughs> I love the chase and then I'm out. Yeah, really? You're just done once you got it. It's yeah, it's, it's, I no, not even like, dude, it's, it's not, I don't even get it done at times. Like mm. I'm a straight up chase and then I'm like, and then I, I'm a fucking pussy too. At the end of the day, like I back out way more times, but at the same time too, like I said, I'm talking on my ass and I don't honestly I wish I could get way more chicks off team fried because I, I really <laughs> fucking don't do <dude. laughs> everybody wants to know hey what what's it is Anderson have a girlfriend I'm like fuck you <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. hey maybe you just need to start a fucking TikTok team fried on TikTok that's maybe where you're gonna get fuck. I mean they're gonna be uh, young yeah. but you're young yeah. yeah I'm still young it's weird though I'm at this age now where it's uh, now you know it's starting to get <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. Yeah, 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 you're right. You're right. You're dude, right. I'm fucking, but dude, I don't know. There is some hot fucking now, 19 year old girls in the world. Oh, like, I'll just say dude. that. Yeah. Oh, bro. There's hot girls everywhere. Dude, in California too, I'm kind of a little, uh, Cali girls aren't really my thing anymore. When I first came out here, I was like, dude, holy shit. These chicks are mm. hot. But, um, no, nah, I will say, uh, dude, Europe. Oh my God. It's fucked up. It's Europe fucked up. is heavy. Dude, and like the the average girl there is a smoke show here. Yeah. It's different though. Here it's a lot of makeup and you got to, you know, have the physique. I think over there it's a lot more natural beauty. Mm. But that's yeah. what I'm into, so that's probably why. Yeah, that Slavic, uh, that Slavic gene is, uh, Fuck. yeah, there's some, just some different shit going on. Dude, I remember. Eastern European, maybe a little Asian influence. Oof. I Sorry, remember, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Geneva Supercross one year and, uh, we were like, we got fucked up. Like that was like a legit party that year. And it was like Hill, Axel, Malcolm was there. Fuck. Who else was there? Dude, I was fucking lit that year. And uh, and we went to this, uh, we went to like the official after party. And so I just fully just got taken yeah. away by the, <laughs> by the memory. We, uh, the, there was like this crazy monster like scaffolding set up. And uh, yeah, we, we got pretty fucking wasted. And it's in the same arena too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got like the arena yeah. and then you go in the car park and it was yeah. like cold as fuck. Yeah. And we're doing like Jaeger shots like the whole night. And, uh, uh, anyway, we like get back to the hotel cause like the party closed down. Everyone was fucking lit and me in the, the, ch I don't want to like, I won't say what year or whatever. I don't want to blow anyone out, but I don't, I still don't even know this chick's name. I don't remember the dude's name. The fucking, the, this dude that won the lights race at, got like this massive champagne bottle. We're all out of alcohol. So we, me 
and the, the group, we would go back to the hotel and we're like, all right, we'll drink in the lobby. Everything's closed. You can't get any drinks. So this French chick <laughs> says to uh, Mathilde, oh, I'll go get the champagne from the fucking dude that won the lights race. He's already in bed. So oh we had like God. this massive champagne bottle. So like I walk up into the room with, <laughs> with this chick and uh, we like sneak in <laughs> like her boyfriend's asleep. We grab this fucking huge bottle go back down i think we went to like hill's room or something like that she barely spoke i don't really think she spoke a word of english i was straight up in love with this chick like i had never seen or heard uh, like she spoke and i fucking melted dude like it was over and uh i sat in hill's hotel room yeah just like completely ignoring everybody else drinking champagne with this chick and we smoked a pack of cigarettes i'd never smoked a cigarette in my life up until this point and i was just like i'm a fucking smoker i'm a pack a day smoker because of how hot you are i was like i don't give a fuck dude okay i i'm about to blow myself out for this but i don't really give a fuck it's i think it's kind of it's this is awesome so there's this (laughs) chick uh when i was living in france in 2018 i went to france during the summer to go shoot gps and kind of have a change in pace in life and shit and um there's this chick uh dude (laughs) fuck i don't know i'm not gonna say her name or anything but dude i was head over heels with this chick she was french as fuck uh, bilingual spoke English with the accent oh. and listened to all the same shitty music that I do. She's Fuck. fucking, she's down. She gets fried. She's down. And dude, I was fucking in love. And, um, she, the one I was always going to see her and, uh, I fucking dude, this is the, I'm going to, bl- okay. This is the only <laughs> shitty part. I was so in love. I fucking went in too deep and I just, carried my own self into the friend zone like right away like a dumbass <sighs> but dude i was so head over heels for this chick um she p- whipped out a pack of cigarettes same thing never smoked cigarettes i'm like fuck yeah give me that <laughs> start fucking lighting <laughs> up and uh and on top of that she was uh she was vegetarian and dude for me i'm really i'm pretty picky with my f- uh food and shit and uh yeah i told her i was like yeah hell yeah i'm vegetarian i'm not giving up i'm fucking eating anything she's giving me just watering it down just like ready to make things happen and uh yeah dude there's yeah it, it'll do it to you over there in europe they're fucking and this is what's crazy like I'm just talking about France and Italy. I haven't even stepped foot in Spain yet. And I heard Spain mm. is fucked up. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, we'll see. Even oh. like English chicks, like you get like a, I, I, had, yeah. I had like a one fucking English bird that I was in love with for like pretty much 10 years. And she, she used to do the like <laughs> dip in and out of your life, like just to keep you in love with her. Yeah. And like, I, I've like yeah. slept, we like slept in the same bed a bunch of times, never fucked. And like, she was just one of those chicks. I wouldn't have time for that these they days. They do that shit, bro. They, yeah, just oh my on. God. I'm fucking, they do that shit. And I'm not the only one like, um, one of my friends, I won't blow him out, but he was in the same boat with some chick in Europe. Like they keep you in check and I'm fucking, dude, I mean, this chick, bro, I'm doing this to myself. She'll WhatsApp me. I'll answer her right now. <laughs> Fuck this podcast. I'm ready to make I'm shit taking, happen. <laughs> I'm taking this fucking call. Hey, matter of fact, hold on. Let me give her a no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Let me just see if she's messaged me. Yeah, that's fucking true, bro. Dude, there's this, uh, oh, the, dude, the, the French thing. Like, I remember, sorry, Marv, I was so in love with Mathilde. <laughs> like, so, <laughs> so in love with Mathilde, dude. I legitimately thought, dude. Uh, I legitimately thought that I'd actually fucking have a chance with that chick. I was like, man, Marv ain't got shit on me. Like, once I get over there, she's going to fall in love with this film, dude. <laughs> like, fuck the guy that's winning championships. She's going to fall in love with the film guy. Dude. A little French accent. They oh. never fall in love with the film guy. No, they, they never they do. Don't. It's funny. <laughs> nah, they don't give a fuck what we can do with the camera. They're like, oh, cool. Like, who's the guy you're shooting? Hundred <laughs> percent, dude. Uh, there's a while we're while we're on the topic of Pornhub and French chicks. The uh, that that couple. <laughs> Leo, do you know that Leo Lulu? Have you seen that channel, dude? I'll is that you. the? Is that who I think it is? The, I think I know the Asian chick. No, oh, she's dope too. The vlogger chick. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> Fuck, that chick I just blew myself. Out. Nah, wait, nah. 
I think that's cool content. Like we're fuck, we're talking as content people. Here, I saw it on my browsing page. I was like, I'm just browsing the internet. Um, oh, this is kind of cool. What's a porn vlog? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm fuck. I would be down with porn vlogging if I didn't have a fucking podcast that actually paid me. But I think that'd be fun. You'd be able to find some crazy. No, cool fuck it. We would want we have that. the following already. We have yeah. the following already. Now we we've, the base is set. You just gotta just go for it. You know. That's how we get. Paid. I, you know what? Maybe I'll pull the plug. <laughs> <laughs> how does a Pornhub revenue work, <laughs> dude? I think it pays pretty good. Like I, one of my friends, <laughs> she, uh, she does OnlyFans. She was at one point she was making 500 K a month. Get the fuck out of here. I'm I swear to God. <laughs> it's shit, fucking hectic. Dude, that shit makes me, oh, it makes me so mad, dude. Sometimes <laughs> I'm like, fuck man, that could be me. <laughs> <laughs> that could be me. <sighs> yeah. I mean, there's some dude. fucking, there's some serious money to be made, but I'm pretty sure that, um, she was telling me that she had like a video like someone ripped something off her only fans and then put it mm -hmm. up on yep. Pornhub and then Pornhub yep. redirects the money to her like they like flagged it as like that's oh, her really? and so like it took a while for him to get the video down but in the time she made like 6k US off like this video that was only up for like not that long so like I think there actually is some wow. pretty le legit money in it but yeah this uh yeah that asian chick she fucking goes hard and she's french too right <laughs> yeah that's why <laughs> so all right that's so there's what I this you're talking about nah, i don't look so, at the names i'm like yeah that fucking chick <laughs> <laughs> dude's not nah, so there's another couple i think they're like alex do you know leo lulu on pornhub Sure, you've seen it, you little fuck, you're lying to me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's like this French couple. And dude, this chick is like 27 out of 10 and like making this like legit porn with a boyfriend. That's one of my only fans where I, I fucking give them money. I'm like completely fine with paying those Damn, two. Yeah, They're living, yeah, the, yeah. living the fucking dream. He's having threesomes and shit <laughs> with, his, with his chick and they're making dude, bank. Dude, so like, awesome unbelievable i'm just like i have zero fucking problem with like giving them money <laughs> you know i just realized mid convo just now uh i'm like fuck i hope my parents aren't listening to this shit. <laughs> dude your mom dms me on instagram because she's 100 she's sure listening 100 listening to this <laughs> mom i'm 24 like give me a break now nah, i'm fucking we just this is off. me right here <laughs> we, we jerk off it is what it is and we fucking we're, we're pay human a, keep it real and we pay amateur porn stars because they fucking deserve it <laughs> i've actually said oh, fuck way too fuck, many times man. knowing that your mom's gonna listen to this Nah, who gives a shit? I fucked it. <laughs> That's one thing though. Uh, with my with my dad, uh, vulgar language. Um, eh, we, I was I was probably dropping an f bomb at like, <laughs> not like gnarly, but I definitely was a little more lenient. That's like the shit kid though, right there. Mm. But my my parents kept me on my my toes. They kept they kept me on my toes, but they were cool. Man, I definitely, that's like one comment <laughs> that I get a lot is people like, why do you have to swear so much, bro? Honestly, my dad says fuck Dude. probably eight times before I even get out of bed and finish breakfast. Like when I was growing up, get out of fucking bed. Like it was just. Yeah. That's like real world, like, Vo like vocabulary though at the same time i know it's not like people don't like it but dude if i never even met you like okay for example let's say i got off um a red eye flight and it's 6 a.m i get an uber to wherever i have to go uber driver asks me hey how's it going i'm gonna be like fuck i'm pretty tired like just, gonna be like, <laughs> just real you know what i mean yeah. like just keep it real like i don't i maybe there should be a filter but i don't know i just think if i can be my actual self and say what i would actually say uh people will appreciate it and say like oh that guy's just fucking just yeah yeah put, put, putting on a putting on an act yeah i mean yeah i've, I, I've yeah. spoken about before but yeah i'm just like man i gotta do this shit for a long time and i gotta like <laughs> well like hundreds of episodes into this thing like it's really hard to have a filter for like almost a yeah. thousand hours of podcasting probably over a thousand hours of podcasting can you imagine having to try and bite your tongue for that me, whole time I, yeah i couldn't like Oh yeah, for me, I'd rather listen to 
actual conversations and us being like, you know, keeping it PG. I don't know. I mean, fuck, that shit's real. Like, that's why I think, too, is like Team Fried. uh, Okay, people think Team Fried is about weed. Um but it's really not. It's it like it's truly like we're cooked. Like you know, you leave day in the dirt at the end of the week. Yeah, and yeah, fried. yeah. But yeah. I think having that almost kind of um, uh, what's the word for it? Um, edgy, maybe edgy. Like it relates more to people. People relate mm. more to that. You yeah. know. A reg- I mean, uh, let's be honest. Like a kid that's sixteen, he can relate way more to us saying "fuck this, fuck that" than you know us trying to kind of watch what we say if that makes sense yeah i mean fuck even with the porn up thing i mean this shit's pretty funny but it's relatable you know <laughs> yeah like we're all fucking doing it <laughs> yeah we're fucking human like who cares man this shit's not ser- like let's i don't know life is too uh uh too short to take be all fucking serious like that yeah all we're doing is just sitting here dying essentially straight up bro i i'm not even kidding in my group chat this morning um i have my one friend who's like crazy conspiracy theorist and he's just sending us fucking links all day long and sorry bro <laughs> he's probably listening <laughs> to this but i didn't mean this in a bad way but he said something uh about like a new fucking covid thing or whatever and i just replied i'm like who gives a shit? We're all going to fucking die anyways. <laughs> Dude, I don't, like, we're dying. It's dark, but like, bro, it's true. Dude, we're dying right now. <laughs> like, living right now. living is just actively dying. <laughs> so like, yes. don't yeah. take yourself too fucking serious. And you know what sucks serious. too? We sleep a third of our life away. Yeah. How depressing is that kind of? Yeah, it's pretty a fucking A third up. of our life. That's a fuck ton that's a lot of time to be just like it's not crazy. really and then where do you go when that happens like <laughs> just fucking lights are off just done uh you know what i ask myself that all the time and like i said i'm not <laughs> religious but i look at it either way there's there's two ways there's two options for me either boom lights out that's it boom later and as much as that sucks you don't really know that it happens so mm. this is what it is or there is something and Hopefully it's going to be probably pretty fucking cool because it's you're experiencing something. So I look at it either way, but yeah, I don't know. It's crazy. The, uh, I really don't get, um, scared of death though, to be honest. Like it's definitely sometimes on like your mind. I'm sure everybody always thinks about it, but, um, I'm just like, dude, honestly, if I die tomorrow, fucking just know I had a good ass life. I really did. I'm fucking 24 years old. I've been able to travel to a bunch of different countries all over the U.S. I've been able to travel fucking probably way more than my parents ever have. Mm. Like, I'm good. You know what I mean? Life life is good. The, the thing too, like, I actually don't think people think about death as much as what you probably think they would. Really? Like, I don't know. Griff, how many times do you think about dying? Once in a while. I do think about it a fair bit. Do ya? Uh, the afterlife yeah, yeah right okay Maybe yeah just the thought it. of like what what's next you know mm. i think a lot of people think about that but for me like i said i live so in the moment um the what's next it's like we'll just fucking find out mm. but in the time in, in in the meantime i'm fucking here and i've got this let's make it happen the people that are scared of dying though is like a weird thing because like essentially if you look at the timeline of your life it's like you didn't exist and then you exist and then you didn't exist again so it's yeah. like in the first period of not existing you really didn't care <laughs> so it's like what makes yeah. you think that in the exactly. second period of not existing you'll give a fuck like you probably won't give a fuck now, even even i thought about like die if you die like a super gnarly death like if you burn to death like that's probably the worst way to go <sighs> It's like once it's over, it's over and you ain't going to give a fuck. Yeah. Yeah. No, straight up. Dude, that's one thing I will say. If I could choose, I want it to be pretty instant. I wouldn't want. Or or if you're going to flex about death, like, yo, Tom just died. Yo, what happened? Dude, he got (laughs) mauled by a fucking shark. 
it's like holy shit that's crazy you know what i mean instead of just the same like just fucking oh he fucking oh he had cancer he had, and that's obviously the really got him. <laughs> i'm not trying to like joke but you know what i mean but like yeah. dude that's pretty gnarly um but i look at okay my positive side is dude maybe we are in the first step and then shit gets crazy after this we think this shit's crazy now see what happens next and to um like when i listen to podcasts all summer um i listen to a lot of like um just different genres but uh one that struck a lot to me was uh i think it was joe rogan and they were talking about like psychedelics and how everything kind of there's a connect there's a connection there you know with mm. the universe and all that shit so and dreaming too you know don't, don't we like produce dmt when we're dreaming mm. like if this is the first step, then there's, you know, there might be some shit. I don't, I don't know. I'm not a fucking scientist, so. The, I, I think, I like, know. dude, we're just dreaming constantly. Like, there's nothing. What there's if no this is a dream and when we're sleeping is real? Yeah, we just wouldn't know. Well, I feel like that so many people can, like, share this, though. So, like, you can confirm reality yeah. to other people. So, that's, like, probably... Yeah. But in terms of that like, just dumb. <laughs> no, it's not like you don't, you ultimately don't know, but it's like the, we're, what we're having is like a shared dream in a sense, because it's like your brains never had contact with the outside world. Like the, the, you're not looking out of windows in your head, like you the eyes, like there's light yeah. hitting your eyes and then there's like fucking shit that goes into your brain and then that brain then produces like this dream state to where like it's like a model of reality so in in, in that sense like when you're dreaming like when you feel like you're having a real vivid dream that's the fucking same as your normal life except the only difference is that you can like confirm the reality like you know me and griff are sitting in the same room right now so it's like i'm like you see what i'm seeing like you seeing that yeah. that wall looks like that and there's a red bull fridge it's like yep yeah, okay okay we're good so we're in the same place yeah. having the same experience but in terms of like how we experiencing it it's like he's watching the same dream and i'm watching the same dream like neither of us are like outside of our fucking brain yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I'm not even high and this is fucking me up right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is a sh I fucking love thinking about this shit. That's pretty much like all I think about other than <laughs> the fucking work. Dude, I will say, I think like, I don't know how it is for you, but ever since I feel like 23 to 24 now, fuck, dude, a lot more like almost, I like more uh, open in, in thinking a lot more about like, more shit if that makes sense and like mm. almost trying to like what the fuck is all what's good with this what's life what is good with <laughs> what this the, you know what, what i mean up to? trying to like you know do, what the fuck dude and like we can get crazy into this shit like space that shit trips me the fuck out like think about that shit you know we're fucking tiny little ants on the sidewalk compared to the rest of the shit you know dude it's wild it's really i've been wild. reading uh i've been reading a bunch of of books around like uh well i read this really crazy book on chaos theory and um basically it's like talking about like fractals and shit and if you heard like you hear rogan he talks about like dmt and stuff it's like this fractal universe like mm -hmm. you just kind of go i haven't done dmt it's definitely on my to-do list um but yeah i uh i started like you'd hear all the way that people talk about like psychedelics and fractals and shit like that and then um in chaos theory that's like basically how like fractal geometry was found and essentially like the i guess the where people are at with like the model of reality is essentially it's just like this one big fractal universe and then we have like our senses so like our hearing our sight um our you know taste and smell it's basically all uh predicated on like waves like detecting waves mm -hmm. so it's like waves of light yeah, yeah. waves of sound so they're Cause all like and effect right yeah and it's all like oscillating so like the reason you hear sounds <laughs> is like you get a peak and a trough in a wave and it's like we're just yeah. tuned in terms of like what our reality is and like the world that we live in and like what we see is basically like this really limited set of oscillations in the universe like stability like stable oscillations 
in this like kind of fractal space and then we like model our own reality onto like this region of stability but you can see in like fractal geometry that you've got like you've got this really limited space where there's like uh like uh periodic oscillations and then from there like you start to get this like weird period doubling and then it du it doubles so there's like two peaks and troughs before it gets back to um like where it started and then it goes to four and then it goes to eight and 16 and then once you do these iterations yeah. it just goes into like this deterministic chaos and then they can actually like predict so there's like chaos and then stability and then chaos you can actually like actively predict where uh the stability is like kind of in with the, the fractal in our it's kind of like history repeating itself basically right yeah yeah so it's like that that, that stability yeah. of like uh you've just got this um yeah you've just got like these periods of stability like you've got this this wave like this yeah. vibration in the air that creates a wave that then we hear as uh, a certain pitch and then all those pitches are meshing together and then you've got like the light waves that come into your eyes and then they get they're stable and then they can be i guess like decoded in a sense and i think that's why you know you circle back to like i guess the art conversation i guess that's why art is so impactful in it there's so much like meaning in art is because it's like you're just creating something out of the chaos like the fucking entire universe is just this like chaotic mess and when you make art and yeah. you, you you're like think about making music you know like you've got a symphony of notes and those notes yeah. are just like yeah. ee, like one violin ee, that's yeah. like a, a wave that's going up it's and down wild. so it's like you're just gathering all of these like random stable elements and then you're just producing something that just has the it like has meaning like it can make you feel a certain way so that's the i think about that shit yeah. fucking constantly yeah dude that shit's fuck you're fucking me up right now <laughs> <laughs> this shit's crazy uh, this shit is crazy but yeah I, I think about that shit all the time like <coughs> excuse me i'm not um i'm really not like uh what's the word i'm not like nerdy or anything like i'm not like I just have interest in that kind of stuff, but I don't mm. geek out on it either. That's just kind of, I think about it. There's, you know, life in general. And yeah, I don't know. That's just crazy what you just said. <laughs> 30, weird 30 minutes to go from Pornhub to Fractal and what's crazy, Yeah, <laughs> Dude, and what's crazy too is uh, all that shit you said, like us hearing and seeing how quick and instant it is too. Mm. You know, like it's it's wild yeah well the craziest part of that crazy. too is that like we know like science knows that there's a huge delay on what so like light and sound they travel at completely different speeds but when you click your fingers yeah. there's no delay and it's like the yeah. easy like layman's way it's like oh well there's not a there's not a delay like it's too close to actually notice the delay but they actually have measured the fact that they're, it, it's almost like a rendering, you know, like when you've got like RAM, you've got like this random mm. access memory that then um, is yeah. like trying to always stay in front of like the processing. Like that's literally what our brain's doing. So in some sense, in a, in a scientific sense, the present moment that you're experiencing is always in the past. Fuck. <laughs> it's fucking heavy, dude. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Goddamn. <laughs> Would you uh would you ever go to space if you had the chance? Mm, I don't know, eh? Fuck, I guess. It'd be pretty sick. I I mean it definitely I would love to see planet Earth from space. Like you get on the yeah. you know, the space station and then you see that view of like yeah. the fucking ball. Because yeah. I mean, I've had some like you would have as well, but I've had some like crazy experiences where Alaska um scotland like these places where you just have like yeah. these fucking incredible views and they just yeah they just hit you like there's something weird happens you know like the center of your experience yeah. kind of drops away and you're just like you really get like there. goosebumps and stuff yeah yeah so imagine yeah i think like going to space, space. <laughs> would, oh yeah dude i think it would be like the most beautiful and scariest thing 
to see at the same time. Mm. Yeah, and I, I would probably like, cry if I saw it though. Oh, definitely. I uh, I wonder. Yeah. I wonder if we can even like comprehend that shit though. Like, I wonder if like there's stuff that's just too. Like, we can make calculations and shit with, like, computers and we can do all that. So, I feel like we've got these pretty insane capabilities. But I just don't think our mental processing can actually keep up with what's going on. And even what we were talking before about, like, the numbers. You know, you see, like, a million people watch the YouTube channel in a month and you're like, it's a fucking yeah. lot. <laughs> it's like yeah you actually can't comprehend yeah. that like you can't you physically yeah. can't wrap your head around what a million people looks like yeah seriously i don't even know what a million dollars looks like <laughs> yeah, that's another good example I've, it's like how much fucking money up. is that <laughs> like dude it's a lot but at the same time i mean i'm not a millionaire but i know that goes quick it's, as well it's a lot but it's not you know? Yeah, actually, fucking Eli Tomac's case at Monster Cup, that's how much a million dollars is. Yeah, yeah. I should have fucking stole that thing when I had the chance. <laughs> yeah, you were probably right there. It was on the podium, dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, well, we, Honestly, we that's the best way to go. Oh, sorry, sorry. No, 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 you're good. You're good. No, I was just going to say, if I were to just say fuck it, in moto <laughs> and i wanted my way out monster cup i'm stealing the million later <laughs> that's your fucking 401k <laughs> peace <laughs> uh, well I'll, uh that's probably an awesome way to end this episode of gypsy tales that three hours went <laughs> quick tommy tenders yeah fucking hell dude Good news is it's uh, Taco Tuesday over here, so you know what I'm about to get myself into. Where are you, where are you gonna go? <laughs> uh, I'm going to Grindstone tonight. The old uh, you've been there, obviously, the old bird yeah. house. I'm yeah. gonna stay there tonight and uh, yeah, go film some of the Grindstone kids uh, ride Supercross tomorrow. I think uh, Robbie Wageman and then Dylan Walsh. So should oh. be fun. I'm excited yeah. actually. It's gonna change it up instead of always filming uh, Jason on Supercross. That's all I've really filmed so far. This year, yeah so actually before you go how's he looking should we should we i need a youtube segment out of this give oh. me some clickbait tommy t <laughs> uh fuck Sp yeah spit dude, straight uh, spit straight bait from what i've seen um good man like he it, it's it's weird because for me i was friends with him the year he won his championship but at the same time i wasn't really around Mm. to see what was happening you know test track days off season i wasn't really around and um it's yeah it feels this off season right now feels a little different i'm also i've been really busy i haven't been able to spend enough more time with him um but every time i've seen him he looks just yeah it just keeps improving and he seems really happy on the bike um <clears throat> it almost seems like uh, these past couple of years since his championship have been in my opinion, just a lot of bad luck, honestly. The speed's there. He's good. Bad luck, mentally maybe not there um, with a bunch of shit, obviously. Everybody, there is a bunch of shit that was going on. Um, so I think this whole change is like really, really good for him. I'm like super pumped for him. I think um, it's a big revival for his career. And the team is stoked. That's the biggest thing. We were we were all tripping like, yo, is Cowie going to be cool with like, you know, Team Fried and us being there and stuff? And mm. dude, first day, open arms. Like we're, uh, I think tomorrow is they're doing team shoots or stuff. Um, Matt and I are supposed to get team fucking <laughs> gear. <laughs> like I've never had, like I never asked for it at Husky or anything either. But it's just weird, like just little things like that. Um, Husky's obviously a really great team and they were awesome to him. Um, and Cowie is just, dude, it's, it's, it's next level. It really mm. is. It's fucking insane. And, um, and they're really stoked for all of us to be there and they're happy with Jason and, uh, dude, first time I've ever been like asked by, so his crew chief Theo, he's awesome by the way. He, um, this is like two weeks into two, three weeks into Supercross. He just comes up to me like mid moto. I'm like going around filming and he's like, so like, what do you think? I'm like, dude good like he looks he looks awesome he's like hey like if you see anything you know 
you let me know. And in my head, I'm like, the fuck? I'm like, yeah. I'm just filming. Like, he yeah. looks good. You know what I mean? But I'm, I had no way. In, like, dude, I wouldn't fucking be like, hey, bro, that like setting. I don't, mm, I don't like that. That's <laughs> he needs to go back. Dude. <laughs> but dude, yeah, he he looks awesome. He he he's. He's hungry. He always is. That's the thing, though. He's had bad luck. People think he's a lazy dude, but that motherfucker cares. He really mm. does. And um, he would ride his dirt bike till he fucking can't. I'm telling you right now. He loves riding his dirt bike, and um, he's always trying. Don't think he's not, because even on days that he has bad, everybody has bad days, and um, even on those days, he's he's still trying, 100%. So I'm excited. Let's uh let's go kick ass. Yeah, man, I'm I'm excited for him too. Um, did the the husky like did the team vibe change a lot when Bobby left? Yeah, yeah. There was, I mean, there was so much going on mm. between that and just him leaving Alton's. There was just so much going on, and at that point, it was like I for me seeing it looked like it was just very overwhelming, and it was just like, dude. I'm good on this. You yeah. Know? That's for me. That's what I, that's what it seemed like to me. Um, you know, obviously he probably has his own reasons and stuff, but yeah, it just, um, it, it was also bittersweet too, because, um, his last race was at Paula, Paula one. So there wasn't even really a last hoorah. Mm. And it sucks. Cause I felt like, uh, he deserved one dude. I mean, he, he's done a lot for that team and i'm sure they wanted to give him one as, as well it's just shitty timing um but yeah it was um it was just it's sad it's sad but it's also um exciting and i think um over the last couple of years with you know a little bit of bad luck and all the bullshit going on he's been written off a little bit in my opinion and yeah. um <clears throat> i say let's go fucking show him what's up because he's still right in the mix yeah no nah, that's so dope man and i'm excited for you guys like as a as a crew i think um yeah i just I, I mean i know you boys and i care for you guys all personally but i just think like as a crew to be doing what you're doing it's just so unique in moto and i think that you guys inspire so many people and like even you know fuck i hope jason can go out and win and get himself another yeah. championship yeah. and just like be on the box but like if that's not what happens, yeah. you guys are still going to inspire so many people. And like, as far as the culture goes and like needing you guys, it's like, we need you guys to be at races and we, <laughs> we need what, what you guys do. So, I mean, obviously like there's the want for Jason to fucking kill it and he definitely can, Yeah, but it's like, even if he doesn't, we still need you motherfuckers there. Dude. And, and we haven't, so <clears throat> ever since we started Team Fried, we still haven't had an official win. Other than off-season win races, yeah. those are the only times I've been able to film Jason fully win. Yeah. I haven't able I haven't been able to get that overall win yet. So I'm I'm I think it's it's coming cuz fucking he's been damn close too many times and uh he yeah, he'll be back for yeah, sure. Yeah, this year this year it happens for sure. Tommy Tanders yeah. nailed it mate you killed your first <laughs> gypsy tails i'm so pumped that we made it happen Jeez, it was good bro. too it was like a little little quick i saw on your gram that you're in california and i was like fuck we need to get him on yeah 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 fuck i'm dude i'm i'm you know what i was actually kind of like man i wonder how this is gonna go i feel like i can't ever talk three hours and i just did um <clears throat> and i'm yeah i'm always down to shoot the shit bro we got all the fucking little stories now let's just shoot the shit i'll tell way dude i have way if you guys think that like it's actually not that funny the french story with that chick it's kind of sad but <laughs> we've got a lot of those <laughs> well yeah we'll, we'll definitely um yeah we'll get you back on i need to figure it out uh, i want to do the full like i know that we're going to do a full team fried podcast we got to do that, but I think I need to be in the States for that yeah. one. Or you guys just like need to, yeah. need to be Or to we'll be, be back. Yeah, yeah, I think I'll probably be over there before before you guys are here, but I feel like that's probably going to be yeah. one of the first podcasts that goes down in like the, the full studio. Fuck yeah. That'd Make be sick. Happen. All right, brother. Well, uh, I don't know what, I mean, 
they're they're not like podcast people, but I will fucking make sure we us three will get on there because yeah, I had a good ass time. So yeah, thanks I think that'll... for having me. Nah, man, I appreciate it, dude. And uh, yeah, fucking big love, and uh, I'm excited. I'll just be watching as a fan every time that that team fraud shit drops. I get that <laughs> notification and smack it up, you know. Fuck yeah! Cheers, bro. All right, brother. I'll talk to you soon. Alrighty. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.